Uh, ma'am, uh, I think we can start uh, start the introduction. Rajni ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Moving on to the next technical session of the conference being organized. The session chair for the second session are Dr. Prashant Baridar, sir, and Dr. Farooq Khalid, sir. Here in this session, we will be having a talk by Dr. Prashant Baridar, sir. So before that, let me introduce sir with a brief introduction. Dr. Prashant, sir, is the chairman and the professor at the Department of Energy Center, MNA IT Bhopal. Sir has done his PhD in thermal engineering. He has successfully led eight projects which involve sensitivity analysis and optimization of hybrid system of solar, wind, and biomass and evaluated downdraft gasifier in RGPV campus using different biomass brigades for electricity generation for Madhya Pradesh Council of Science and Technology. There has also two projects for Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, energy generation using vortex induced vibration and blade profile optimization of Sevenius wind turbine. His constant and unfailing devotion have earned him best faculty award in 2010 by Honorable Chairman BOG and the Best Researcher Award in 2017 by CRS Education Expo and CR Noida. He, he has also published over 140 research papers in reputed international and national journals as well as in conference. He has authored five books and three book chapters on mechanical engineering. He has also guided 63 MTech research theses and 11 PhD theses so far. He has also two patents to his credit. Sir has done several sponsored and consultancy projects in energy sector for Madhya Pradesh, Uja Vikas Negam, NHDC and Municipal Corporation. Engineering College Baswada welcomes you, sir. It's my honor to have you, sir. Now I request you to start with your presentation, sir. Thank you very much for such a nice introduction. Thank you, sir. At the outset, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the organizing committee of uh, this international conference, uh, Prayers 2021, for allowing me to share my view with you. So I'm sharing my PPT. Yes, sir. So very good afternoon, you all. Is my PPT visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good afternoon, you all. I'm Dr. Prashant Bayada, Professor and Head Energy Department, Molana National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. And today I am delivering a lecture on topic kinetic modeling of anaerobic biodigestion. So before starting my presentation, I just want to give you a brief idea about uh, what uh, this topic is. Basically, this topic is based on a uh, waste utilization. Uh, different types of waste are there, so we can utilize this waste in a better way to obtain energy which can be utilized for any other purposes. So actually this is anaerobic route, whatever organic waste is there, 
as you all know that organic waste is always problematic because uh, uh, number of problems are there which are associated with the organic waste of course any type of waste is there waste is always problematic but uh, if it is organic one then it is more problematic because there are number of uh, things which are related to that organic waste problems arises due to this organic waste actually what happens uh, if you store organic waste for a certain period of time it starts decaying degrading or deteriorating as a result of that uh, mosquitoes flies insects they are breeding happens over there and uh, as the process of our decomposition continues the entire atmosphere surrounded by these uh, uh, waste becomes uh, unhygienic uh, exposes the atmosphere and uh, due to that so many diseases uh, chances of spreading so many diseases are there that is why if such organic waste is there if you put such waste in a closed container and uh, if you monitor all the parameters related to that uh, better way you can decompose it and it can be converted into the useful product and in this process actually the container closed container in which you put that waste uh, that is called reactor or digester and uh, anaerobic as uh, um, you are not uh, allowing the uh, external air to come in contact with that waste that is the uh, anaerobic so everything is takes place inside the closed container that is why the process is anaerobic now the my topic is uh, kinetic modeling of anaerobic biodigestion so in this uh, biodigestion process uh, number of microorganisms or bacteria are there which are responsible for uh, this process to take place and the quantity in is in crores or millions so you need to monitor uh, their uh, um, means uh, new bacteria born then their uh, uh, development growth then maturity then dying of this uh, bacteria or microorganism everything you have to monitor because it matters lot all those millions of bacteria or uh, microorganisms are there but uh, if the dying rate is more or uh, growing rate is less then in that case uh, uh, you will not uh, get proper response in this biodigestion process so to monitor all this at the moment the growth growth rate then uh, uh, the main thing is the substrate which you are using for uh, digestion process so their concentration that also you have to see so all these uh, we can study in the kinetic modeling of anaerobic biodigestion process so this is what the idea behind this uh, um, presentation or uh, we can say motivation that uh, if any waste is there and if you dump that waste in a open space there also it will get decomposed and save and improper disposal of animal or farm waste that may result in land and surface or ground water pollution leaching of ammonia then ammonia methane will be released methane emission which can cause a greenhouse effect which is 22 times worse than carbon dioxide and second thing is the bad order if in the open space that get decomposed that is called aerobic decomposition that we call aerobic decomposition in the aerobic decomposition uh, the air will come in contact with the uh, waste and in the presence of air 
the decomposition process where it takes place that is called aerobic decomposition and due to that uh, uh, as the decomposition process takes place okay uh, the entire atmosphere surrounded by this space uh, that may spoil and it will give you bad order so that is why it is uh, always better to add up anaerobic decomposition for the for the an uh, organic waste okay so that is why my presentation is based on the anaerobic decomposition of the waste there are numerous uh, advantages of this anaerobic decomposition process uh, the best part is that after decomposing it uh, the useful gas that is methane can be produced after decomposition process and you can collect that methane gas in the gas collection chamber and then that uh, methane gas or the other name is biogas can be utilized for uh, obtaining heat energy by supplying it to the cook stove or by supplying it to the dual fuel engine you can produce electricity also then here in the anaerobic digestion process uh, 100% utilization will be there Not, no part of this waste will be wasted okay even after converting the waste into useful gas the leftover which will remain there that can be can also be used as a fertilizer or manure and second thing is that whatever leftover which we are going to use as a fertilizer or manure that will have more nutritious value more nutritious value than the uh, open uh, dumping uh, decomposition that is uh, uh, what we call composting then as the decomposition process takes place inside the closed reactor Uh, there will not be any pollution the entire uh, area surrounded by this uh, container will be hygienic okay there will not be any spreading of mos mosquitoes insects or flies over there so and second thing is that there will not be any bad order so this is actually based on bioenergy and bioenergy is renewable source of energy in what sense it is a renewable source of energy that uh, can be explained by this carbon cycle so biomass or bioenergy in the form of plants okay that can be eaten by the uh, human beings or animals they uh, the excreta which is given by the uh, human being or animals excuse me sir prashant sir yes yes please uh, your slides are not changing Still on the first slide. Just a minute. Now, now it is visible. Yeah, now it's okay. Yes, yes. Now it is visible. Yes, sir, but it's not in the uh, full screen mode. Now, no, it is in full screen mode. Uh, sir, you have to share it on the uh, the icon of the full screen mode. It is still in the PPT mode. Now it is in PPT mode. Okay. Now yes. I am making. I am making it in the full screen mode. F5. Sir, but uh, you have to uh, share that 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 file. That window actually you have to share. Okay. Just a minute. One second. I will share. Yeah. Yeah. Sure.
Now is it visible? Sir, so it's visible, but it is not in the yet. I have shared it again, but uh, still the problem is there. Sir, uh, first you have to make it full screen, then you have to share that that full screen uh, file actually. That, that's what I have done. That's what I have done. Okay. Then you continue in this mode only, sir. Okay, okay. So, that excreta can be utilized as a manure for the plants, okay? And uh, what we exhale, animal and uh, human beings, what we exhale, CO2. That CO2 can be taken so by we, the plants. Sir, we are still on the first slide. You are still on the first slide, sir. The title slide. Yeah, now. Now carbon cycle slide is going on? Yes, yes, now it's fine. Okay. Actually, if I try to make it full screen, then that problem is arising. Yes. Okay. So, what we exhale as human beings and animals, that CO2 that is taken by the plants, uh, for the photosynthesis process in and uh, in the presence of sunlight uh, with the help of carbon dioxide and the water that plants prepare their food okay again that is eaten by the animals and human beings okay and that co2 is released again in the atmosphere then second route is that uh, if that uh, biomass is utilized in the industries uh, in the boilers or furnaces as a fuel and after combustion, the CO2 is released in the atmosphere. Again, that carbon dioxide is taken by the plants and thus this cycle repeats again and again. So that is why we can say that this uh, biomass or bioenergy is renewable source of energy. It is. It can never be exhausted. It can be used again and again. Now, there are different routes for waste utilization, which type of waste is there. Accordingly, different type of waste uh, utilization technology can be adopted. Uh, the main three categories are thermochemical conversion, biological conversion, and physical conversion. Under the thermochemical conversion category, uh, combustion, pyrolysis, and gasification routes are there. Uh, combustion means open fire burning in the presence of air uh, when uh, any fuel burns, okay, that is combustion. Then uh, uh, one more process is there uh, that is similar to combustion that is incineration process. So in the incineration process, uh, that is actually a controlled combustion. The, whichever waste is there that is uh, uh, that can be put in the uh, container, okay, uh, which is called incinerator. So here, any type of waste like inorganic waste, organic waste, it can be put there and that can be combusted and or heat energy can be obtained. And then that heat energy can be utilized for different purposes like uh, for cooking, then for electricity generation or generally incinerators uh, are very much useful in the hospitals uh, where a large quantity of inorganic waste in the form of uh, you know, caps of the medicine bottle, then uh, plastic bottles, then uh, wrappers of the medicine, uh, different types of waste uh, are there and we have a problem of uh, storing such waste every day. So, um, in the, our National Green Tribunal, NGT, they have made mandatory for the bigger size hospital that they should have incinerators in their premises. Uh, take care of this uh, inorganic waste. Otherwise, uh, they have to um, face uh, this problem every day. And second thing is that with the help of these incinerators, these are bigger size hospitals uh, can uh, um, convert that waste into useful energy in the form of uh, hot gases to produce the steam. And that steam can be produced for sterilization process for uh, for uh, obtaining hot water for washing purposes because in the hospital you see that uh, 
the curtains, then uh, bed sheets, then uh, hanky, towels, everything, etc. So many things are there which they have to which they have to wash every day. And second thing in the operation theater also they have to sterilize all the equipment every day. So that uh, uh, steam can be used for such purposes. Then other route is pyrolysis. Um, in the pyrolysis, uh, actually, it's a controlled combustion process, partial combustion, rather partial combustion process. In the partial combustion process, limited amount of air is supplied and uh, uh, it is uh, combusted in the presence of limited amount of air. And uh, the first stage is actually a carbonization process. Second stage is actually a liquefaction or pyrolysis process. And third is the gasification process. So whichever waste is there, that passes through these three stages and it's a partial combustion process. So instead of uh, uh, CO2, which is obtained in the complete combustion process, instead of CO2, CO is obtained in the gasification process. So that uh, gas we used to call as a producer gas, so that can also be used for obtaining heat energy by supplying it to the um, cook stove or, or any furnaces or boilers or it can be supplied to the beautiful engine for obtaining the electricity. Then the biological conversions are there in the biological conversions also. Uh, fermentation, fermentation means life without the oxygen and anaerobic digestion process is there in the fermentation process. Acidic uh, fermentation, alcoholic fermentations are there and most of the bakery items, dairy items or uh, alcohols or wines or uh, different medicine can be obtained by this fermentation process. And then the anaerobic digestion process in this process, uh, uh, whichever organic waste is there that can be converted into useful energy, uh, useful gas, which is called methane gas or biogas, and that can be utilized for obtaining heat energy or electricity generation. Then the physical conversion is squeezing, means, uh, uh, means uh, by converting it uh, physically uh, by squeezing process, uh, oil can be obtained by transistorification process. So these are the different uh, um, waste uh, conversion processes are there. So aerobic decomposition, I already told you that uh, the decomposition process takes place instead of in the presence of air, whereas anaerobic decomposition process takes place uh, in the absence of uh, air, absence of oxygen. And anaerobic decomposition process is more uh, uh, advantageous than the aerobic one because uh, the anaerobic process is uh, the control process where every parameters you can monitor and there will not be any part of the waste uh, will be wasted everything can be utilized and second thing number of advantages are also there that is uh, hygienic atmosphere there will not be any um, growing of uh, breeding of mosquitoes flies insects over there because this process takes place inside the reactor Uh, the uh, methane gas which can be obtained by this anaerobic decomposition process have average composition of methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, nitrogen, uh, water vapor and uh, hydrogen sulfide. Uh, the major component is uh, methane whose percentage is 50 to 70 percent and that of carbon dioxide is 30 to 40 percent. But uh, CO2 uh, presence is never desirable because it uh, reduces the calorific value. That is why you need to remove that carbon dioxide. So this gas can be purified by removing this carbon dioxide. So for this purpose, this gas can be passed through the alkaline solution, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, where it gets absorbed and forms carbonate, carbonate and remaining gas becomes CO2 free. So that can be used for heat energy. So this anaerobic process uh, takes place in three stages, hydrolysis, hydro, uh, uh, acetogenesis and methogenesis stage. In the hydrolysis stage, uh, uh, most of the complex compounds are converted into simple uh, monomer based compound. In the acetogenesis stage, that is converted into the acetic acid or carboxylic acid. And in the third stage, methane uh, formation stage, uh, that uh, acetic acid is converted into methane. So in this uh, hydrolysis stage, protein is uh, converted into polypeptide or amino acid and fat is converted to glycine and fatty acid. Mm. I will move this slide a little bit fast. 
I will directly come to the kinetic modeling. So, what is uh, kinetic modeling actually? So, in the kinetic modeling, uh, the bacterial growth, bacteria which are present inside the reactor, their growth is monitored. So, this bacterial growth is actually a complex process involving numerous anabolic uh, and catabolic uh, reactions. So, actually, ultimately, it results in the cell division. So, if the medium supplies all nutrients required for growth and environmental parameters are optimal, increase in number of bacterial mass can be measured as a function of time to obtain this growth curve. So, basically, this growth curve uh, can be um, studied in three stages, uh, sorry, four stages, that is lab phase, exponential phase, stationary phase and date phase. So, this growth curve uh, consists of four phases. In the lag phase, in the first phase, the um, newborn bacteria are produced, um, and in the in the second stage, that is exponential phase, that is in the exponential phase, uh, their uh, multiplication, division, and uh, growing of these bacteria, the microorganism takes place exponentially, and in the third stage, that is stationary phase. In the stationary phase, uh, the new uh, rate of newborn bacteria is equal to uh, number of uh, death rate, death rate, that is stationary phase. We will see this uh, different phases one by one and in the death phase rate of uh, dying bacteria is more as compared to the newborn bacteria. So, this is the uh, growth curve you can see uh, how this uh, bacteria behaves in the different phases that is lag phase, exponential phase, stationary phase and death phase. In the lag phase, uh, uh, rate of newborn bacteria is more uh, and in the exponential phase, their mass and quantity increases exponentially. Then there is a stationary phase. In the stationary phase, both the rate that is uh, newborn bacteria and dying rate is almost uh, same. So, that is stationary or maturity stage and in the death stage, uh, rate of dying bacteria is more. So this is what the lag phase is, uh, lag phase is, uh, the growth rate is uh, essentially zero. So after pressing inoculum into fresh medium, growth begins after a period of time and that is called actually a lag phase. Uh, the duration of this lag phase uh, is from minute to several hours. Um, and actually the period of this lag phase depends upon the type of medium which we are using as well as the initial inoculum size. Uh, if an uh, inoculum is taken from an exponential phase, means uh, uh, there are four phases. So, if you have taken that uh, inoculum from exponential phase, then in that case, this uh, lag phase, length of the lag phase will be uh, less. But uh, if you are taken this uh, inoculum from the death phase or uh, lag phase, so then in that case, uh, that uh, length of lag phase will be more. In the exponential phase, that is actually a second phase, uh, uh, the growth and rate of increase of cell is maximum uh, compared to any other phases. So, in this phase, exponential phase, uh, uh, maximum growth rate uh, you can uh, observe and uh, the number of cell increase in the geometric progression that is 2s to 0, 2s to 1, 2s to 2, 2s to 3, 2s to 1. So, this cell division takes place like this. Uh, first, a single cell is there, then it is divided into two cells, then they are further divided into again two cells. So, like that, cell division takes place. So, 2 is to 0, 2 is to 1, 2 is to 2, 2 is to 3, 2 is to 4. Like that, uh, this uh, number of cells grows and multiplies. So, their growth rate uh, mathematically can be described using the following expression that is dx by dt is equal to mu x, where x is the number or mass of the cell and t is the time and u is the specific growth rate constant that is per unit time. Uh, if you talk about the stationary phase, so there is no net growth, so which can be expressed by the following equation that is dx by dt that is the rate of growth rate is almost zero. So there is no net growth in the stationary phase but still a uh, little bit amount of cells still grow and divide and uh, uh, the growth which is uh, growth or uh, newborn bacteria's uh, rate 
is uh, almost equal to the rate of sale uh, line. Then the last phase, that is death phase. This is actually a final phase of this uh, um, microbial growth curve. Uh, there is a net loss of culture available cell. Uh, dying rate is more. Growth and cell division is uh, almost uh, negligible. Um, the uh, growth and cell division is there, but that is uh, negligible as compared to the exponential phase. Then this uh, effect of substrate concentration on the growth that can be described by using monod equation. This model is developed by Jacks Monod in 1940. That is mu is equal to mu max s upon k s plus s. So where uh, mu is the specific growth rate and uh, mu max is maximum specific growth rate per unit time for the culture. Uh, S is the substrate concentration that is mass per unit volume and K is a half saturation constant uh, that is mass per unit volume. Uh, also, uh, it is called as affinity constant. So, this equation was developed by Monod after uh, doing series of experiments. Then these, uh, the results of these experiments show that at low substrate concentration, growth rate becomes a function of substrate concentration. So thus, a monod design equation to describe the relationship between specific growth rate and the substrate concentration. So he has considered two limiting cases. The first one is uh, uh, when the substrate concentration is uh, uh, more than the saturation constant. So then in that case, this uh, equation number two, that is a uh, growth rate equation that can be converted into uh, this equation three, that is dx by dt is equal to mu max s where this substrate concentration is more than in that with respect to this uh, uh, saturation constant. Yes, so Ks will be negligible, so then in that case uh, Ss will get cancelled out uh, and it will become dx by dt is equal to mu, mu max x. Then second limiting condition is that uh, substrate concentration is very less as compared to the saturation constant. So then in that case, uh, uh, this is equation of uh, uh, growth rate that will modify into this equation number 4 that is dx by dt is equal to mu max sx upon ks. Then uh, he has also uh, calculated cell yield. So this uh, growth rate uh, equation can be rewritten in the form of substrate uh, utilization that is dx by dt is equal to 1 upon y dx by dt where y is the salient, that is mass per unit mass, means mass is the mass of bacteria per unit mass of the substrate, substrate mass. So if you submit, uh, substitute that way, uh, value in the equation number 3, then in that case it will become ds by dt is equal to minus 1 upon y mu max sx upon ks plus s. In this way, uh, this is the rate of substrate concentration. Then, how many number of uh, bacteria are there that can be um, calculated using the electronic microscope? So, for that purpose, uh, uh, this sample uh, covers a uh, uh, glass plate can be taken over the glass plate. That sample is put over there and it is covered by the cover slip. Uh, the gap between the cover slip and the glass plate uh, is 0 0.02 mm, that is 1 by 50 mm. Then, this uh, cover slip is uh, uh, mark with the whole grid, uh, horizontal and vertical lines forming grid. Uh, so there are 25 large squares, a total area, square, total area of 1 mm square and the total volume of 0.02 mm cube. So if uh, under electron microscope, if you observe this, so it will appear like this. So in the each uh, square, how many bacteria are there that they you can that you can count and then multiply with the number of squares. So number of squares, squares are 25 and in each uh, square there are, uh, let us say 12 cells, so 12 multiplied into 25, okay. So in this way you can calculate uh, number of uh, bacteria per cubic centimeter or per mm. So how is kinetic modeling takes place here? So cell growth uh, during the exponential phase is shown by the expression dx by dt is equal to mu x where x is the number or mass of cell and mu is the specific growth rate. So by integrating it, uh, you can uh, integrate it with, uh, by putting the limit. So you will get this expression. So after 
taking log. Uh, so you can see here, so x to be double, x upon x is equal to two. So at stationary phase, dx by dt is equal to zero. How this cell division takes place and they are multiplied. Uh, then this monod equation, in this monod equation, uh, if you rearrange this uh, monod equation, that is mu is equal to mu max into s upon ks plus s, uh, you take the reciprocal of this, reciprocal of this, that one upon mu is equal to ks plus s upon mu m s. So after rearranging it, that is ks upon mu m plus mu m s plus uh, into one upon s plus one upon mu mu m. Okay. So you can plot the graph. Uh, this expression is uh, become uh, like a equation of straight line in the form of y equal to m x plus c. So by plotting this one upon mu uh, with um, versus one upon s, uh, you will get the values of slope that is k s upon mu m then y intercept that is 1 upon mu m, then x intercept minus 1 upon ks. So if you plot this uh, equation in the graphs, you can observe the, uh, the nature of this curve, nature of this uh, straight line. Okay, So how this bacterial growth and the substrate concentration behave with respect to each other. So in this way, uh, we can carry out the kinetic modeling. So this kinetic modeling helps us in observing the bacterial growth uh, by plotting the growth, growth curve in different phases that is uh, lag phase, exponential phase, um, stationary phase and death phase and further uh, how this uh, growth, uh, bacterial growth uh, behaves with respect to substrate concentration, how much substrate concentration is required whether there is scarcity or uh, shortage of substrate concentration then in that case we can add more quantity of uh, substrate concentration or bacteria, quantity of bacteria is less than in that case, uh, you can add, add some inoculum from the previously digested uh, uh, slurry or from the different stages that is a uh, exponential phase stage or uh, st uh, stationary phase. So this way you can monitor all these parameters. So in this way you can carry out the kinetic modeling, modeling of the anaerobic digestion process. So I take a little bit more time uh, for this uh, presentation. So, if you have any queries, please feel free to ask me. Any participants uh, wish to ask any question? Or So uh, thank you very much, Prashant sir, for your wonderful talk on uh, anaerobic bio biodigestion. Uh, a lot of work is going on, and a lot of work is need to be done still in this waste management and all. So thank you for your wonderful talk. Uh, now I'll re request. Uh, 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 Prashant sir and Farooq sir to please uh, sh uh, start the session number two. So Farooq sir, yeah, Farooq sir is also there. So I request you to take over the session and uh, uh, I hope you, you are having the award sheet uh, for awarding the marks to the presentees. Uh, hi, Dr. Vireshi. Yes, uh, I do have the award sheet with me. Uh, hello, Professor Prashant, it's nice to hear to you. As hello, well. sir. Yeah, it was wonderful to hearing you. Thank it you so much, sir. It was a very comprehensive model and it was very nice. Uh, we really enjoy it. And so, shall we start the session? Yeah. yeah so, the first paper for the session. Paper Thank you so much, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Shindi. Yeah. Yes, sir. Please share your presentation. Yes. Uh, sir, am I visible to you? Yeah. Uh, hi, Pranati. Uh, I need to add a little bit to you that you have 15 minutes in total for this presentation. 
Okay. And for the presentation, you have 10 minutes, okay? So you have to present your work in the 10 minutes. So try to be keep as the time limit and the five minutes will be for question answer, okay? So okay. you are not supposed to end your session until unless we ask you to end it, okay? Okay. Make sense? Okay. Yes. So let's uh, listen to you. Good luck. Uh, sir, the presentation slide is appeared on screen. Hello? Yeah, it's visible. Yes. You can go on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pranoti Shinde, a research scholar in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at uh, College of Engineering, Pune. Uh, I'm presenting a review, and my title is Production Design Analysis for Airfoil Shape Optimization. Uh, these are the content I will talk about. So uh, I will give you the brief uh, introduction. Uh, so when uh, we talk about the machine designing or uh, any design in the mechanical engineering, uh, we always uh, talk about the efficiency and the performance. And uh, for the wind turbine blades, uh, for the wind turbines, the efficiency is most important. Uh, so the aerodynamics performance um, of the uh, wind turbine is uh, mostly dependent on the blade, blades and the airfoil. Uh, so, if we compare the traditional aviation airfoils, the wind turbine airfoils have different operating conditions and performance requirements. Uh, so, the wind turbine blades, basically blades, uh, plays the key role for the efficiency and aerodynamic performance of the overall uh, wind turbine. Uh, so, nowadays researchers uh, 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 do the research uh, by uh, using uh, by using two types of approaches, which is a uh, inverse airfoil design approach, and second is a direct airfoil design approach. Uh, in the reverse, uh, in the inverse design uh, approach, uh, what uh, they have uh, done is uh, they uh, select um, power output uh, as a requirement, and then they design the airfoil. And in the uh, in the direct airfoil design approach. Uh, what they do is they design a, uh, an airfoil shape and then uh, they, uh, according to the specific environmental conditions, uh, they carry out the power performances and the efficiency of the airfoil. Uh, as we can see in the diagram, uh, this is the airfoil, uh, which is a cross-sectional area of the uh, blade, uh, where uh, the starting point is called leading edge and the end point is called trailing edge. And the points um, and the line joining both the points uh, is called chord line. And uh, the line, the curve line, which is symmetric to the upper and the lower surface, uh, and joining both the points is called camber line. Whereas the distance between both the surfaces, the upper and the lower surfaces, is called maximum length. And uh, the camber, the distance between maximum distance between the camber line and a chord line is called a maximum camber. Um, the angle between uh, the relative wind with the chord line is called angle of attack. So uh, studied uh, carried out uh, by the researchers where we uh, see uh, the research based on the airfoil. Uh, when it's, uh, when uh, we have started uh, using the wind turbine blades, uh, there is an application of a low speed aviation airfoils, which are uh, glider airfoil, FX77 airfoil, and NASA LS airfoil. But uh, as the companies uh, started develop, uh, we started using uh, uh, for, uh, airfoils, which are particularly uh, particularly developed uh, for the wind turbine blades, uh, which are uh, American um, American. Uh, NREL S series, uh, Danish RISO series, and Dutch DU series, and Swedish FFAW series. So, uh, the author uh, uh, RPJOM1 Ruzi uh, in the journal Solar Energy Engineering uh, gives a paper uh, which is uh, roughness sensitivity consideration for thick rotor blade airfoil. As we can see in the graph that uh, they have used a three kind of uh, uh, airfoil models, which are uh, DU97W300, FFAW3301, AH94W301. Uh, and uh, they have reviewed for the thickness of 25 to 30% thick airfoils, where 
thirty percent thick uh, thickness, uh, which is given for a DU ninety seven W three hundred, meets the requirement best. Uh, the reduction of the FNO sensitivity uh, can be achieved both by proper design and by application of a vortex generator on the upper surface of the airport. Uh, at the uh, board location, we can see that uh, the two D uh, wind tunnel tests uh, do not represent the performance characteristics uh, because uh, the influence of the rotation is not included. Uh, the result also shows that um, from the code indicate that uh, rotational effects dra dra dramatically reduces roughness sensitivity effects uh, at in board location. Uh, it is also found out that uh, the strong reduction of the roughness sensitivity and the design for inboard airfoils can primarily focus on high uh, lift and structural demands. Moving on to the next slide, uh, the author uh, J. W. Larson and the all others uh, in the Journal of Fluids and Structures uh, gives a paper which is dynamic stall model for wind turbine airfoils. They have presented a model uh, for the aerodynamic lift under dynamic stall which is based on the uh, backbone, cur backbone curve um, in the form of a static lift uh, as a function of angle of attack, as we can see in the graphs. Uh, also, uh, they have proposed a model to validate against test data for uh, from two load cases, uh, which is at the fully attached flow condition and, uh, and one during dynamic stall condition. They have also dem uh, demonstrated uh, model which performs equally well or even better than more uh, complicated models and uh, uh, and also they include uh, non-stationary effects uh, which are essential for obtaining satisfactory results. Uh, so uh, finally the influence of the camber and thickness the distribution on the backbone curve are also being analyzed and uh, also shows that these effects are adequately encountered uh, for via the static input data. Uh, so, the author here is J. Y. Lee and R. Lee and the all others in the Journal of Power and Energy. Uh, paper title is uh, Aerodynamic Optimization of uh, Wind Turbine Airfoil Using Response Surface Techniques, in which uh, they have improved the aerodynamic optimization technique and um, uh, they have used a two dimensional wind turbine airfoil. Uh, which is uh, presented on the basis of combination of response surface method and uniform experimental method. Uh, their um, objective functions is the lift to drag ratio and uh, lift to drag ratio uh, where the uh, variables are uh, like cord, um, tip speed ratio, angle of attack and um, Reynolds number. In the order to reduce the number of design variables, uh, the upper and lower surfaces of the uh, references airfoil uh, fitted by using two B spline curves uh, with only four control uh, control points each. Like on the upper surface, uh, it is uh, they are taking a four points, and at the lower surface of the airfoil, they are taking four points. So total, they are taking eight points. Uh, by using the ordinary of the eight control points as a design variable, the range of the design variable are set, and the airfoil is parameterized. Uh, the optimal ordinates of the eight control points are obtained using a quadratic uh, poly, um, polynomial expressions. Uh, so uh, the research is, uh, uh, when we talk about the airfoil, the research is basically based on the aerodynamic shape of the blade. Uh, so um, the wind energy is an indirect form of a solar energy. And uh, since the temperature difference and the pressure induced in the atmosphere by absorbing solar radiations, uh, it sets a motion of a wind. And uh, the rotor mission uh, is a wind uh, in a wind turbine is transforming this kinetic energy uh, of the wind uh, to the mechanical energy. Moving on to the next slide. Um, author uh, uh, Mostaba Tahani and you all others in the Journal of Energy Equipment and System uh, presented a paper that is uh, aerodynamic optimal design of a wind turbine blade using genetic algorithm in which they have carried a, a study uh, on uh, on the aerodynamic analysis of analysis of the wind uh, uh, upwind three bladed uh, horizontal axis turbine blade in which they have used. Uh, uh, 
blade element movement theory and a gene uh, genetic algorithm for the optimization of the blade. Uh, the power output, uh, power output is considered as um, objective function, uh, which is mostly used uh, for the study of the aerodynamics and used as an object, uh, objective function. Uh, the op optimization variables also involves chord, uh, chord and uh, twist distribution variation and the placement of the airfoil section along the blade length. Uh, they have used a modified, uh, uh, they modified the BEM, which is, uh, which, uh, and they compared the result with the experimental measurements, uh, which indicates reliable results. And uh, the result shows that the, uh, that considering placement of airfoil as a design variable in addition to cord, cord and twist rate has a significant effect on the optimal output power. Uh, the objective functions uh, uh, is also improved by 10% compared to the base function. Uh, on the next slide, uh, the author is uh, Zion V. Liu and the all others in the journal of uh, uh, renewable energy. The paper title is Optimized Linearization of Cord and Twist Angle Profile of Fixed Pitch, uh, Fixed Speed uh, uh, with uh, Wind Turbine Blade, uh, which is shortly called as FPFS. The tip speed ratio uh, varies with the wind speed and the originally optimized cord and uh, twisted angle they do not necessarily provide the highest annual production uh, uh, energy production. Uh, the annual energy production they have considered as an objective function and um, uh, the novel optimal blade design uh, uh, demonstration is also done by the using uh, by the using FPFS method. Uh, through adopting linear, linear radical profile of the blade cord and twist angle and optimize the slope of these two lines. Uh, this approach can uh, be used for any practice of uh, FPFS, uh, wind turbine blades design and refurbishments. Uh, uh, the Pranati, is... you have last two minutes to wrap up the things, okay? So please. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so uh, the author R. Rajkumar and D. Uh, uh, they have presented a paper titled Optimization of Wind Turbine Power Coefficient Parameter Using Hybrid Techniques, in which uh, they have proposed a technique which is combination of a genetic algorithm and artificial neural uh, network, in which uh, uh, the power coefficient parameters are determined by the respective angle of attack and optimized by using genetic algorithm, which is the first phase. And in the second phase, uh, they have used the artificial neural uh, network uh, in which uh, the training data sets, the power coefficient parameters are also optimized by, execu uh, by, execu uh, by executing this phase of the genetic algorithm, uh, which includes generating the training data of the design parameters of the wind, uh, wind turbine. Uh, in the author A.J. Vital and um, A.P. Uh, Rosie in the Journal of Hydrogen Energy, uh, paper title is compu uh, computational method for the design of a wind turbine uh, blades. Uh, they have developed a, a iterative algorithm which is uh, called Zui's Design Ador. Uh, with this uh, software, it is possible to obtain the optimum blade shape of the wind turbine uh, to satisfy energy requirement of an electrical system with the uh, optimum rotor efficiency. Uh, also, uh, the results are provided in a different windows, like a uh, two and uh, three dimensional graphic shows the aspect of the resultant blade. The numerical results are displayed for the blade length, blade surface, pitch angles, uh, variation along the blade span, um, rotor angular speed, rotor efficiency, and rotor output uh, power. Uh, and uh, they have shown that results were similar to those provided by the commercial uh, wind generation manufacturer. So, uh, so the Swiss, uh, uh, the algorithm, the iterative algorithm they have developed is uh, really able to use when it comes to uh, optimization of the blade. Um, the research which is based on the airfoil elastic performance, we'll talk about that. The airfoil, uh, uh, the aeroelastic performance is basically com combination of a fluid mechanics, the dynamics and the structural mechanics, which is uh, aerodynamic forces, uh, inertial forces, and elastic forces. Uh, the, uh, the author, Lee Wang, in the journal Linear Sustainable Energy Review, um, gives the paper, uh, which is state of art in aeroelastic of wind turbine blades, uh, which is aeroelastic modeling. Uh, 
they have presented the state of art aeroelastic modeling for wind turbine blades provide a comprehensive review on the available models for aerodynamic structure and the cross sectional area uh, they have written um, uh, both the researches that uh, uh, the research field by summarizing underlying theory by presenting a comprehensive review and the uh, and field by and the field by providing a comprehensive list of relevant references in which the detail of uh, modeling approach can be obtained the author john bonley and the others in the journal wind energy uh, presented a paper uh, which is aerolytic uh, analysis of wind turbine blades based on modified theory uh, in which uh, they have used a new aerodynamic model which is proposed as a modified strip theory and uh, the modified strip theory was established for flapping wind aerodynamic model and consider a high rel uh, relative angle of attack and dynamic stall effects uh, a simulated wind turbine based on model uh, using uh, multi body dynamic software ms adams uh, where the uh, flexible part uh, can be uh, included by importing a finite element build uh, by using a ensis Uh, the proposed aeroelastic analysis method was also validated with the uh, predicted performance of the N R E L uh, R E L five megawatt model of an airfoil. Uh, so the overall conclusion is difficult uh, to analyze or make an analysis of the non-linear behavior of the airfoil and assess the changes in the responses of the airfoil uh, to the flow analytically based on equations and calculations. so uh, we use the numerical uh, simulation method uh, and as well as the experimental analysis uh, uh, for finding out the behavior or the requirements uh, of the performances also the 2d analysis studies are carried out in the adjoint sol solver now uh, nowadays and uh, for the 3d analysis the topology optimization is uh, carried out so uh, topology of op optimization is best suited uh, for the three dimensional analysis on the air so the differences are this uh, thank you that's it. if any questions you may want any questions anybody So, Pranoti, which uh, approach is better for better, better profile optimization? Uh, sir, I think we should go for the uh, edge joint solver, and uh, we'll go for the RBS morphing tool in the ENSYS. Okay. There is signature, Miss Naka four zero four one. What is the significance? Of this number four zero four one. Sir, actually, it is a. Uh, it is given four zero four one is a percentage, um, uh, which shows the uh, chord length and the percentage of the uh, camber, uh, camber and thickness. Four stand for. Sorry, sir. Four zero four one. Uh, sir, like four zero four one is uh, like. Um, Uh, the distance between the percentage distance between the chord line and the uh, camber line is uh, defined by the four zero percentage that is a forty percent and four um, one is a four uh, one is a uh, surface percentage a thickness percentage between the two surfaces maximum thickness percentage between the two uh, surfaces. So, which parameter is more significant? Uh, in what sense, sir? For harnessing more energy. Uh, sir, it depends on the uh, on the field at where you are using it. Uh, so right now the companies are using Naka zero zero one two for the vertical wind axis uh, turbine blades, wind turbine blades. So I think Naka uh, Naka zero zero one two is best suited uh, to capture uh, capture uh, the wind uh, energy from the wind. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else want? Pranati, I have a question to ask. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So my question is: uh, Do you know what uh, limits the performance of the wind turbine? Uh, sorry, sir. 
what limits the performance of the wind turbine there is some limit uh, that you cannot beyond go beyond that do you know that what limit is it uh, for a wind turbine sir uh, the limits are like uh, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, uh, use um, more weighted uh, more weighted first of all uh, blades and also we cannot go for a, a large angle of attack no 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 and uh, sir is asking about the beds limit beds criteria beds criteria is there na yes sir hmm. uh, so there is a limit uh, yes sir that is a limit yeah. uh, it is a beds limit which is uh, uh, 3.14 which one uh, sorry 50 uh, 59 uh, points i am not remembering 9.3% is okay yes, so in this Okay. Okay. Thank you. Nice presentation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Prashant sir, can you ask the presenter? Thank, the thank you. Uh, yes. Yes. Sir. Who is next? Who is next? Next is uh, paper ID one. Sitanj Kumar. Yes. Sitanj yes, Kumar Golwal. So Sitanj Kumar. Sitash, please, please, I, yeah. please present your yes, topic. Sir. Yes, sir. My screen is visible, sir. Uh, Hello, yet. sir. Now it is visible. No, it's not yet visible. Yeah, now it's now it's yeah. coming. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, good professors and experts. Uh, today I am going to present my. Uh, Research paper on maximizing biogas in Chhattisgarh and optimizing various operating parameters. Review. I'm presently doing PhD. Biogas production of the anaerobic digestion is gaining popularity because it can solve the problem of the waste disposal, energy crisis, and environment pollution. But despite a number of these advantages. Conventional anaerobic digestion process, uh, such as it has a big release and high return on time. So, in order to accelerate the biogas production, the researcher will co-digest in various substrates as as, as well as do extensive literature review on the same topic. No literature review. The first parameter is the effect of the co-digestion of the substrates. Co-digestion means simultaneous digestion of the two or more substrates at the same time. Co-digestion provides balanced nutrients, dilute the toxic substrates, and reduce the cost of the biogas production. Enhanced the value of the biogas. Now, in co-digestion, this is a low carbon nitrogen resistant substrate. It's co-digested with the high carbon nitrogen resistant substrate. In order to balance carbon nitrogen, it should be noted optimum carbon nitrogen ratio for anaerobic digestion lies in the range of the 20 to 30. So this purpose is achieved with the help of the co-digestion. Now, the Sharma D K did his PhD from IIT Delhi in the 2002, and he did one person's onus research on anaerobic digestion of the cattle dung, and he found that there is an increase in the biogas production by 80 percent when one person onus research did. Similarly, I already had all carried out experiments in the 2007 year. Or adjusted banana and plantain blend in the different issue. And he found that, uh, sorry, they found that uh, one issue only is to use the bitter reason. Similarly, the year they don't did our experiment in the 2007. They or adjusted algae slurry in paper waste. They found that or adjusted use the bitter reason. So, how many year they did our experiment in the 2008? They or adjusted organic portions of the solid waste in common, and they found that or adjusted use the bitter reason. So I cannot go through all details because of the time limitations. Now second parameter. The second parameter is the effect of the waste nutrients. Nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, as well as micronutrients like cobalt, nickel, magnesium are important for the survival growth of the bacteria. But if higher concentration is there, then there is a decrease in the biogas production. So calcium, calcium gives trace grain. Calcium found that if potassium Calcium, magnesium, copper, and zinc and nickel. The concentration is increased beyond 3,000, 2,850, 401, and 10 milligram per liter. Then there is a decrease in the biogas production. Now next phenomenon: the effect of the pre-treatment. 
So why may define is necessary? The objective of the pretreatment is to disintegrate the complex biomass, is to increase the bioavailability of the substrates and to dilute the toxic substrates. So various pretreatments are available, that is actually on acidic. So these actually as treatments are available. Uh, uh, are used to change the pH value. And micro are used to structure as you dilute the So this also shows that treatment is also increasing the power destruction. No specific function issues. With total solid concern means the amount of the organic matter presence in the biomass slurry. If total solid concentration is in, exceeds beyond the 9%, then there is a decrease in the biogas production. So for optimum biogas production, so total solid concentration should be less than 9%. So effect of the temperature. The methanogenic bacteria is active in the two temperature range, that is a thermophilic and mesophilic. The mesophilic temperature range lies in the range of the 30 to 40 degree, and thermophilic temperature lies in the 50 degree. The only endocrine digestions of it is kept out in the mesophilic temperature because thermophilic temperature is costly. The rest of the source of that is required. But also, it is also a very big way and it is a very big way to avoid it. The endocrine digestions is inhibited. Now, effect of the pH. At is in a pH range of the 6.8 to 7.2. Tufted compositions. Anaerobic digestion strongly depends upon the liquid, protein, and carbo in the concentration. Higher the concentration of the liquid, protein, and carbohydrate, higher is the biogas production. But if the concentration is exceeds beyond the certain limits, then there is a decrease in the biogas production. Then particle size. Smaller particle size of the biomass will be prepared in order to enhance the biogas production. So when particle size is 1 to 2 mm, there is an increase in the contact surface area between the bacteria and organic waste material, and that will help in increase in the biogas production. Similarly, additions of the silica gel is also helps in the biogas production. So when the production is increased beyond the 65 gram per liter, then biogas production will be inhibited. Now, effect of the inoculum. So, inoculum is nothing but active uh, biological substance and that are added uh, to start an action of the biogas production. The particular type of the inoculum is uh, more uh, uh, preferred for particular type of the substance because it enhances the biogas production. Now, research problem. So, what is the research problem? The biogas production from the single substance is very low and retention time is very low. So, in order to accelerate the biogas production, the study is carried out. So, objective of the study. So, in this study, these substrates are co-registered as shown in the slides. And what is its effects on the biogas production? That is investigated. So, second objective is the various substrates are co-registered according to the designs of experiment, that is co-registered and factorial design. And what is its effects on the biogas production? That is investigated. And the third that is to investigate the bed. 96 experiments are carried out. And out of these 96 experiments, which have been produced maximum biogas that is investigated in the process. The fourth objective is to investigate the optimum pH value in intense and time. What optimum pH value and intense that is the maximum biogas that is investigated in the Now, this is the experiment of satisfaction. This is the pectin biogas reactor. This is the scrubber unit. This is the gas value and this is the weight measuring. So, thermo the objective of the thermostatic water bath is to maintain the desired temperature in the digester. So, these are the 15 reactors. In the 15 reactor, the various waste material, as shown in the objective, are co registered according to the, and according to the design of experiment, and they are fed into the reactor. Also, inoculum to substrate, inoculum to water ratio of 1 is to 6 should be maintained in the digester. After feeding the various substrates, this top power of the digester is closed. This is the top power of the register is closed to maintain to maintain the anaerobic conditions inside the register. Uh, then after all the motors are connected in the series. 
and costus in our rpm of the 160 should be maintained so there is a thorough mixing of the substrate you know uh, and water should be taken this various substrates are retained by digester for a period of the 35 days so that the active fermentation should be taken this when the biogas is produced then biogas is allowed to pass through this scrubber unit in this scrubber unit the various impurities like hydrogen sulfide hydrogen carbon dioxide are absorbed and only remaining gas is passed to allow to pass through the gas fusion unit so this is the roller pan oh, so by pressing the roller pan uh, we can reduce the So by pressing the roller gun, we can pass the pH value by inserting the heat pump in this scrubber unit. By pumping under value, and by pH value part. So this is the return gas measuring unit. In a return gas measuring unit, it works on the principle of the buoyancy and rotation. So when definite volume of the gas is passed, this flow cells are lifted and residual pulse is generated and residual pulse is Recorded with the help of the software, and similarly also uh, gas is measured with the help of the software. These are the techniques. So these techniques look like this. This is the photograph of the cross photo wheel waste. The photo wheel waste is also dried in a sunlight for a period of the 30 days, and then up to the others in a domestic mixture. This is the photograph of the paper waste. The paper waste is also crushed in a domestic mixture. This is the photograph of the cooked dal waste, cooked rice waste, and rice waste. All these four waste: the cabbages, cooked dal waste, rice waste, roti waste. All they are taken in equal proportion to. Made in food waste. This is a photo of the cow dung inoculum. The cow dung inoculum is taken from actual biogas plant. <coughs> so, this is the overall result of the study. From the ground waste, this CAW means cooked food waste, CPW means cross paper waste, uh, DCPP means PPW means grand cross photo of the the gram, then highest seven eight seven eighty nine point five biogas is produced. So only from eighteen grams of these substances, this much of the biogas is produced. Second biogas, highest biogas is produced from this dry and crushed marigold flour waste, dry and crushed flour of waste, crushed uh, food waste when taken in the proportion of the six 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 grams. However, in some of the reactor. There is also no biogas is produced due to acidic and active environment in the digestion. Now, uh, what is the conclusion of the study? So, co digestions and are. I think uh, Mr. Sitanesh Kumar has been disconnected. Yeah, so let's wait for him for one more minute and then we will see yeah, okay. what happens when he joins. Sure. Or can you contact him through WhatsApp or anything, any other means? If you have that, so that we know that whether he is being able to join us or no. Uh, Dr. Varesh, uh, have you wrote to him on WhatsApp or do you have any his contact number or anything? Uh, sir, he's not responding to the call. 
So what we can do, we can start with the. Yeah, I think we'll let's move to the next presentation with the permission of Professor Prashant, if he allows. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Chancellor. Yeah. If he says it's okay, then we can move to the next one. Yeah. Uh, sir, should we start the next presentation? Yeah, I think, yeah, let's go to the next one. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Let's move. Yeah. So, paper ID 33. The mother ready. Yes, Did sir. They? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, My screen is visible, sir. Hello. Yeah. Ah, sir. Is, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Hello, sir. Yeah, okay. Dr. Damodar, you can present now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, warm welcome to the international conference, sir. Thank you, sir. Your screen is not visible to us. Screen is not visible, sir. Screen, yeah. Everyone entire screen. Uh, Falak says Sitanesh Kumar has joined. If you want to ask any questions to him. Okay, in the meantime, uh, we can ask uh, Sitanesh a yeah. quick question. Yeah. So, there is there. so yeah, uh, Sitanesh. Yeah, so yes, I have a quick question to ask. Uh, was it uh, the study carried by you or was it the review? I also study carried up the study and also review is carried. This is my PhD topic. So why you call it a review? Because that yeah. uh, confuses me. Yes. You wrote it like that. Uh, I will share it, uh, my study. What is going on in the review? So you want to mean that uh, this is the comprehensive view of your research, huh? Yes. That what? Okay. So next time, better you know the title of the paper should be in such a fashion that uh, one should know clearly. You know whether it's your study or was it from the literature or what was it? Okay. That's a small suggestion okay. to you. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, Mr. Damodar, you can present now, okay? Yes, sir. My screen. Yeah, it's visible. Now make it the full screen and keep going. Yes, sir. Uh, you have to respect the time limit, okay? It's yes, a total yes, 15 minutes. Yeah, you can go. Yes, sir. Making full screen, sir. Yes. Is it visible, sir? Now it is visible for you, all of you, sir? Yes, sir. We can see it. Perfect. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for providing the thanks for providing the opportunity nice. for this international conference, sir. Myself, Damodar Reddy. I want to project today investigation on waste heat recovery from the condenser of air conditioning system, sir. Okay, now, sir. Uh, investigation on waste heat recovery from the condenser of air conditioning system. Sir. This is my ID. Now, coming to the abstract, this is my abstract. Then I will go for the introduction sir see sir first of all uh, how this compression vapor compression refrigeration system works initially come refrigerant enters into the evaporator where it absorbs whatever the heat present in the uh, surroundings let us take our refrigerator whatever the uh, uh, substances present in the refrigerator that heat is absorbed by the refrigerant then it will enter into the compressor where it is going to compress to a high pressure under temperature then uh, that is converted into liquid uh, uh, you know, from uh, liquid to vapor step. Then completely that is converted into gas in the condenser. This is the main important component where I'm going to stress on the component, air cooled condenser. In the condenser, what happens? Air, completely air is rejected into the atmosphere, rejected to the atmosphere. In this condenser, what happens? The condensation of the refrigerant will take place. That means phase change of the system will take place. Phase change during uh, phase change, maximum amount of heat is transferred to the atmosphere. 
that means latent heat of vaporization will take place. Now, from this condenser, that will enter into the uh, expansion wall. Through the expansion wall, this will enter into evaporator. The cycle will continue, sir. Now, our intention is instead of letting out to the whatever the heat energy, heat content to the simply to waste heat into the atmosphere, why can't we utilize that uh, condenser heat? Instead of letting out to the atmosphere, we can utilize that heat. In all our even in our domestic refrigerators also, we are letting out to the atmosphere only. It is letting out to the atmosphere only. But, okay, sir. But from this refrigerator, we cannot get that much of domestic refrigerator. We cannot get that much of uh, heat energy. Okay, now, sir. My intention is instead of that, we are going for uh, chiller. Chiller means like uh, let us take if you take any Infosys company where it is re uh, required in terms of 100 TR, 250 TR, like that a huge amount of air conditioning system is required. At the time, the, whatever the condenser compressor capacity is there, that is very high. Okay, now, sir. Then uh, condenser in the condenser also heat rejected by the condenser is also very high. That heat can be utilized. That main main concept is that heat can be utilized that heat can be utilized to convert the waste heat into to heat the water. This water can be utilized for various purposes, various purposes like washrooms, cleaning purpose, like other whatever the wherever heat or uh, hot water is required for bathing purpose like that washrooms, we can utilize that heat. Now, in air cooled children, what happens? Whatever the heat is there, that is simply let out to the atmosphere. Instead of letting out to the atmosphere, we are going to utilize the uh, heat energy by modifying the existing system. By modifying the existing system. By modifying the existing system, we can we can increase the uh, rate of heat transfer to the water. And also this here, because of this uh, utilization of water cooling system in the condenser, then what happens? The COP of the system is also going to increase. COP of the system is also going to increase. That is our main intention. These are the literature reviews. These are some already some uh, <coughs> uh, engineers or scientists did some experiments. Now, what is the main concept here? Heat rejected by the condenser. Heat rejected by the condenser, that quantity of heat, how much quantity of heat is going to reject to the atmosphere that we have to calculate. Then we have to de decide how much heat we can uh, get from the, how much temperature of the water we can achieve with this uh, waste heat from the condenser. That is our main concept of the presentation, sir. Now, coming to the mathematical modeling or mathematics, how it is going to convert into uh, hot water, that is just heat into hot water. Uh, in general, we know that heat rejected by the condenser is equal to the heat absorbed by the water. Heat absorbed by the water. But we cannot achieve 100% efficiency, but we, we can take some parameter like uh, <coughs> uh, up to 60% we can achieve, sir. Now, these are the calculation part. Heat, heat rejected by the condenser is equal to mass of the refrigerant into enthalpy of uh, entering the enthalpy of refrigerant entering the condenser and the enthalpy of the uh, refrigerant leaving the condenser, which gives the total total heat content in the condenser. Okay, now, sir, this is also how this uh, heat can be utilized by the, this heat energy can be utilized by the, this, this heat energy can be utilized by the cooling water. This is the basic concept, sir. Okay, now, sir, these are the uh, general, uh, whatever the temperature readings we got, we got, we got from the results. Based on this temperature, whatever the temperatures available, that we can find out how much temperature. Generally, the water temperature will be available at 25 degrees centigrade. With that, uh, that 25 degree, we can raise up to 36 degrees centigrade, depending upon the uh, workload and also uh, seasonal climates. Now, the main basic is we, here we have to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. What is this overall heat transfer coefficient? This is the overall heat transfer coefficient. If only one system is there, then simply heat transfer coefficient HEA will be there. But here we have different pipes and all these things. That is why we are going to, instead of heat transfer coefficient, we are going to use the overall heat transfer coefficient. These are the, uh, what are the procedure we are adapting to calculate how much quantity of heat can be recovered 
Okay, then, sir, based on our heat transfer correlations also, Reynolds number, uh, the Reynolds number, Russell number, and all these things we can find out H also. What is H? Heat transfer coefficient H. H is equal to K N U D by D. Here, you cannot get K N U D by D directly by using the LMTD method. We can reduce. What is this LMTD? Log mean temperature difference. Log mean temperature difference. Here, we have two types of uh, fluids. One is hot fluid and the other is the cold fluid. Based on these temperature differences available in the hot fluid and cold fluid, we have to determine the LMTD method and then only we have to go for the key transfer. Q is equal to HEA into delta T. Sir. From this up to uh, 1.86 kilowatt, this is one uh, reading we have taken that this amount of heat energy can be recovered. This heat, instead of utilizing our heater, water heater, we can use this uh, hot water for the various purposes like washrooms and all these things. Okay, now, sir, this from this, what I am going to conclude is that in this, we have waste heat. In this, in this waste heat is there. That waste heat can be utilized. Waste heat can be utilized uh, to heat the uh, water. That water can be utilized for various purposes for cleaning all these things. With this, the efficiency of the system is also going to increase. How the efficiency of the efficiency in the sense coefficient of performance? How the coefficient of performance is going to increase? That means when you use air, the CP value of air is low. The CP of value of water is higher. That means more effective cooling of the refrigerant will take place and also the life of the compressor is also going to increase life of the compressor is also going to increase these are the main advantages with this uh, waste heat utilization of condenser instead of letting simply into the atmosphere we are going to utilize the waste heat to convert the cold water into hot water that hot water can be utilized for various purposes this is my presentation sir these are the references what they did is it sir Sir, if you have any doubt, you can carry, you can ask, sir. Anybody have queries? Anybody want to ask? Uh, okay, Damodar, yes. Yes, please, sir. Yes, sir. You can go ahead and I can ask you after you ask, okay? Okay. Uh, Damodar ji, how did you measure the temperature? By using uh, by using uh, the thermocouples only, sir. Which type of therm which type of thermocouple? Uh, thermocouple or contact ther thermocouple only, sir. By using that. Which type of thermocouple? Uh, we have two types, sir. One is uh, infrared thermometer is also there, and also we have direct contact uh, thermocouples also there, sir. What are the possibilities of cogeneration in your setup? Cogeneration, we cannot generate power, sir. But this hot water can be utilized if any uh, power generation plant is there, that can be utilized, sir. Okay. Have you validated your results? Yes, sir. How? Uh, by using the calculation, whatever the uh, formulas are there, by uh, simply substituting all these uh, temperature values we got from the condenser, that by substituting all these values, we can uh, find out whatever the heat quantity Q is equal to. That is why HEA into LMTD. Instead of delta D, we are going for LMTD. Sir. Yes, sir, please. Faruk, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Professor Prashant for letting me know to ask the question. Yeah, Mr. Damodar, uh, I have a question. Why won't uh, we use this for power production? Do you yes, have any sir. idea? Why yes, won't sir. we use this such for power production? Power production, yes, sir. I will yeah. tell you. Power production means uh, we must have some uh, turbines or some other thing. We can just we cannot by using this hot water, we cannot utilize uh, this hot water for power production, sir. To produce okay. some power, we need yeah. some turbines, sir. If I put my turbine there, whether I will be able to generate, let's say. Uh, if it permits the temperature, whatever the temperatures we are getting, then it's a fine, sir. We can utilize that, sir. You can utilize that water, hot water. Have you heard about something called the exergy? Because the potential in this energy is very less, you know, so you cannot yes, get work out of it. So that's the main reason, okay? Yes, sir. Although the 
energy wise it is quite high but exergetically it is very low okay because yes. of the temperature as you mentioned okay so that yes, was the yes, one sir. thing and uh, second thing i want to see that you claim that your cop increases when you use the water or this have you have any result to verify this claim yes sir you, uh, let us you check see yes. anything like that in your result wherever you present that okay if this yes, is the sir. case for the something like that we didn't see that how the cop increases when you do that yes sir yes sir thank you sir i will tell you sir uh, if you go with the air cooled air cooled uh, refrigeration and that is chiller then the uh, <coughs> always heat transfer only we have to concentrate sir heat transfer p is equal to uh, mcp delta t mcp delta t if any parameter in the mcp delta t increases obviously heat transfer rate will increase sir let us say air sir cp q is equal to mcp delta d cp for air is 1.005 kJ per kg degree kelvin when you take the value of cp for water that is 4.186 kJ per kg degree kelvin instead of using 1.005 if you take 4.186 then obviously the heat transfer rate will increase then more amount of heat is transferred to the atmosphere in the condenser sir our main intention is in the condenser then thereby the load on the compressor will uh, decrease sir Uh, that uh, what about the temperature because temperature you are not fixing both temperature are you fixing your inlet outlet temperature then this would be true but uh, eventually yes, temperature also Our changes system. you know if you use yes, water sir. that it will uh, let's say cool down less because of higher cp if you are using something air or something you know because you need to balance the energy yes sir water generally we, we, uh, water temperature will be around 25 degrees centigrade sir 25 degrees centigrade inlet And outlet will be around 36 to 37 degree, 38 degrees up to 38 degrees centigrade. We can achieve some. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much. I have no question to ask, Professor Prashant. Uh, could you please go to another speaker? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who is next then? Uh, next is uh, paper ID 16. हितेश पांचाल जिदे दामोदर सर कैन यू सब जाओ हितेश पांचाल सर और हेमिन ठक्कर सो नेक्स्ट पेपर आईडी पेपर आईडी ट्वेंटी एट श्रीनिवास रेड्डी Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm there. Yes, sir. sir. Yeah. Please start your presentation, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, it is it visible? Is it visible, sir? Yes, yes, it is visible. One minute, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, and all. My name is Sino Asredi. Uh, present working as assistant professor in uh, Kids Warangal. Uh, today I am going to present the my paper ID. Paper uh, ID is effect of Kitta based serpentine flow channel on TEM fuel cell performance. So this is the outline of uh, my presentation, introduction, methodology. In that numerical methodology, results and discussion, conclusions, references. So introduction. Uh, day by day, the pollution pollution increases in atmosphere. So in that regard. so we are going to non conventional energy sources that is a green energy so the fuel cell is the one of the promising technology so that is a, it, it converts electrochemical energy into directly into electrical energy so it is the same as battery but uh, ba battery is uh, only stored chemicals converted into electrical energy but in case of fuel cell as long as supply the fuel fuels so it will convert the uh, lp it, so it can produce the electricity so there are the different types of uh, fuel cells uh, based on the electrolyte direct methanol fuel cell alkaline fuel cells molten carbonate fuel cells solid oxide fuel cells 
phosphoric acid fuel cells and proton exchange fuel cells. So these are the uh, power uh, producing uh, based on the uh, different uh, fuel cells. So in that, uh, uh, I have selected photon exchange fuel cells. So PMS produced up to, from one watt to the up to ten kilowatts. And this is the exploded way of the fuel cell. So there are different anode side and cathode side. Anode side flow field GDL catalyst layer. Proton, uh, this is the membrane proton exchange membrane. So and cathode side also catalyst followed by the GDL followed by the uh, this uh, this uh, flow field. So flow field uh, is used to distribute the uniform distribution of reactants. And also GDL function is to allow the uniform dispersion of the reactants to the catalyst layer and also it regulates the water content also and the uh, catalyst layer function is to initiate the reaction and, and, and also accelerate the reaction and proton exchange membrane, it, it, is, it allows only protons, so it is called the proton exchange membrane, it doesn't allow the electrons. Uh, so these are the, uh, there are two reactions happened in the fuel cell, one is the anode side reaction, cathode side reaction. So we are supplying the hydrogen anode anode side and oxygen and cathode side. Hydrogen is supplied to the anode side. The hydrogen is picked into hydrogen ions and electrons. So the hydrogen is passing through the membrane. The electron doesn't pass through the membrane. It will pass through the load. So these uh, these electrons flow of electrons is called current current. So for completion of reaction, the electrons is uh, reached to the cathode side and hydrogen also ions also. Passing through the membrane into the cathode side. So, these both electrons and hydrogen uh, react with the oxygen. So, it will uh, produce water. Water is the exhaust. So, there, these, these are the two reactions happened in the membrane. Uh, this is the animation view of the proton exchange membrane. So, anode side hydrogen is split into hydrogen ions and uh, electrons. Only hydrogen ions is passing through the cathode side. Electrons passing through the circuit. This flow of uh, electrons is called. Uh, uh, electricity. These electrons and protons uh, is uh, reaction with the uh, oxygen. Only water is generated, exhaust. That is called. This is called green energy. There is no pollution uh, in fuel cell. So, so much literature is. I have gone, I have gone through so much literature. So I'm not presenting this literature. So this is the re research gap identified from the literature. It is noticed that most of the research I have concentrated on various conventional flow, flow channel configurations and the optimization of various parameters and orientation of flow only. Only limited work is available to optimize the width and land, uh, land width of the ratio. Detailed analysis of optimum width thickness and channel width is a challenging to improve the PMFC and durability of the fuel cell. So our objective is in this paper to investigate the effect of land and channel width of the serpentine flow channel performance by using CFD analysis. So these are the steps involved in the CFD methodology, uh, 3D uh, model development, meshing, solver and post-processing. So the, um, this is, these are the assumptions I have considered in, the, in this uh, work. Uh, these are the geometry dimensions. The area of the fuel cell is 7 by 7. So here, uh, uh, first I have uh, varying the land width from 0.5 to 2 mm. And uh, uh, here the channel width is constant. So in this case, here channel width is varying from 0.1 to 2 mm, yet uh, land width is constant. So these are the model development, all the parts of the PM3 also using, uh, prepared by using SOLIDWORKS 2010 and all the assembly as I have done in the uh, same. And, and after uh, developing the model, I have uploaded the ANSI design modular. So by using fill command, we can fill the gaps and also different material properties are set in the uh, ANSYS design model only and the meshing also done in the ANSYS 15.0 so this is the discretization of the total component and also grid independent test also done this is the, com this is the mesh file so the uh, grid independent test tests are carried out so by, by using grid independent study we can optimize the optimize the size of the grid at the computational time so here I have considered 0.41 million and 1.58 million and 2.85 million elements. So by using these elements, I have, I, uh, I have taken the simulations. So from 0 0.41 million elements to the 1.8 million elements, so there is a drastic change in the performance from 1.8 to 2.85. So there is any small deviation is, occur, is observed. So for that, uh, based on that observation, I have considered 1.8 million elements for the further studies. So these are the solver. 
so input uh, in ansys 15.0 so the ansys the fsl model is not there so we are selecting the add on module fsl and electronics electrons analysis module is selected and also the, these are the operating pressure we are, we are selected 1.0 1.3 to 500 these are the temperatures we can set and initial 100% humidity humidity conditions also set these are the governing equations i have considered for the simulation these are the input parameters i have used in the simulation and the operating parameters also so here uh, there are four types of uh, rip thickness are considered 0.5 1 mm and 0.512 mm here channel width is constant see effect of the so these uh, simulations are conducted at various operating temperatures from 325 323 kelvin to the 353 kelvin so the temperature increases in the all types of language configurations the performance is increases up to 343 degrees kelvin see see here from so the this is a 323 the, the first figure is at 323 kelvin second figure at 333 343 and 353 so here observation is from 323 to 343 the temperature increases the performance increases Due to proton conductivity increases, so the dispersion rate, the diffusion rate of reactant increases, the out, finally power output increases. So from 343 to 353, the performance is deteriorated. So because of the temperature increases beyond 343, the membrane dehydration, the, the membrane dehydration occurs. Due to the membrane dehydration, the performance will be decreases. And also uh, here the uh, Land width also varies from 0.5 mm to 2 mm. So the land width varies from 2 mm to 0.5 mm. So the the change in uh, decreasing the land width, the performance increases. So due to the increase of uh, um, active area, due to, due to increase of active area, so active area increases, the performance increases. So these are the uh, the at 0.5 mm land width. So I have at the various temperatures. Here, see 323 to 343, the performance increases. So because beyond 353, the performance decreases due to dehydration of the membrane. So by considering the net power density, so here parasitic parasit glasses are considered. So by considering the parasitic glasses, the performance, the 1 mm uh, land width gives the best performance. Previously, 0.5 mm land width gives the best performance. After considering the parasitic glasses, the performance of 1 mm land width gives the uh, best performance. So here, uh, here different channel width, 0.5, 1 mm, 1.5 mm, 2 mm channel width. So here land width is constant. So in this case, the simulations are uh, conducted at different operating pressures. So the pressure increase, operating pressure increases, the diffusion rate of reactant increases. So for the four flow fields, and finally, the performance pay increases. And also here, the channel width, channel width decreases, the performance increases. So the channel width decreases, number of channels uh, increases. Uh, finally, the performance increases. But the point, uh, ultimately, the 0.5 mm channel width gives the best performance. But the parasitic glasses considered, after considering the parasitic glasses, the 1 mm channel width gives the best performance. So the our simulation results optimum parameters at optimum parameters our simulation results is compared with the Venkatesh Varel et al experimental results. So only the uh, only six point six percent deviation will be so observed. So these are the overall conclusions. A three D model was developed to study the effect of land width and channel width on the performance of VMC. The following conclusions were drawn from the study. The FSL is 1 mm land width gives the best performance when parasitic glasses are considered. The FSL performance increases with increase in the flow uh, reactants. So the 1 mm land width gives the best performance when operate at the high flow rates. And also the FSL performance enhanced with the increase in the operating temperature from 313 Kelvin to the 343 Kelvin. The performance deteriorated behind the 343 Kelvin. So the, at the 343 Kelvin, the FSL gives the best performance. And also for the VSL is the 1 mm channel which gives the best performance. So these are the references. Thank you, sir.
sir any doubt any doubts any questions uh, thank you very much uh, mr uh, dr sinivas reddy yes sir uh, for such a comprehensive presentation uh, any question from the audience or prashant sir do you have any question to ask yes srinivas power density is very less yes sir so what to do uh, for, what to do for what to do for that number of stacks can we increase yes sir by using number of uh, cells increase yes so combination of cells in series we can increase the power density sir okay. anybody else want to ask Sir, yeah. yeah, I have just a question, a small question to ask. Uh, Mr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you also see the effect of the pressure, huh? Yes, sir. So why do? Yeah. Once you uh, pressurize your system, why don't you change the temperature? Why you keep only three fifty three Kelvin? Because in that case, uh, the vaporization will not happen. You know, because in the system at that atmosphere pressure, we want to. Don't take it beyond 100 degrees Celsius, you know, because it may go into steam or something like that. But why don't uh, you do it uh, when you have a, a pressurized system? Yes, sir. At, uh, we are uh, doing uh, pressure variation at 353 Kelvin, sir. So that is the optimum temperature we got. So beyond that, that uh, dehydration occurs in the membrane, sir. Due to dehydration, mem membrane may uh, burn, sir. Burning occurs, sir. Because of that, we are taking that that temperature. We are conducting uh, simulations at that kind. Okay, so it's uh, basically the use of your PEM limits. Uh, so it's yes, sir. Yes, sir. The oh. PEM PSL limits only up to seventy degrees to eighty degrees only, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So let's uh, move to another presenter. Thank you, Dr. Srinivas. Thank you, Srinivas Reddy, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, next presentation uh, is from paper ID 27, Prashant Pare. Yes, sir. Yeah, Prashant. You can share your presentation, yes, please. Okay, sir. Sir, is it visible? Yeah, it is visible. It is visible. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, my name is Prashant Parai. I am a PhD scholar from Manit Gopal. So my topic is a review of efficient design of heat exchanger by additive manufacturing. Uh, these are the index follows. Uh, sir, starting with the heat exchanger, as we all know, this is a very most important piece in any process equipment industries. Exchanger either may be used for the cooling or heating purpose in any plant or refineries and overall mean if we go in a thermal sector, it is one of the important things. Yes. So these are the these are the overview of main AM technologies. As you all know, uh, 3D printing, different different technologies are indulged there. I just uh, came across the literature survey and throughout I have seen the seven important additive manufacturing technologies. Sir, why to use additive manufacturing? Uh, sir, one minute, yes, sir. So I am zooming. Okay. Sir, advantage of additive manufacturing in heat transfer. From the last 10 to 20 decades, many literature surveyors uh, and uh, research scholars are working over there. So, the most important prominent factor is to surface area to volume ratio. So, we have seen in a current state of approach, so many type of compact heat exchanger came into the market where the compactness can vary from 700 to 800 and 200 to 5000 meters square per meter cube so we are now moving towards compact heat exchanger so there is a several advantages of uh, additive manufacturing in heat transfer we will go moving forward to see these things uh, this is a first uh, advantage of 
freedom from traditional design if you will go in any type of heat exchanger uh, designs we are basically we are using the 2d structure and this is a 2d or repetitive structure so now in any heat exchanger uh, if you will go we can create any free form surface as uh, that we all know what is the advantages of 3d printing so in a particularly heat exchanger we can create any kind of free form channels or any kind of the shapes so we can even print circuit heat exchanger pschc now is in market so it can create a freedom from traditional design so it is touching many areas like uh, uh, aerospace uh, uh, injection moldings and so many things now can we can move to the volumetric design uh, from the literature we are uh, from the literature survey i have seen so many free from volumetric designs what they are trying to get they are reducing the weight of the component and fabricating the volumetric designs so the topology optimization can be done where free from component are designed so this is also one of the crucial factors uh, which are which i have seen in the literature from last two decades the people are working on the volumetric designs so must so many works are going out here uh in a conventional in a conventional heat exchanger as you all know the tubular design have came into the market uh, we are using tubular design from long time so now the 3d printing give us a freedom which we never have seen the non tubular geometries like we can go for the spired configuration or the helical surfaces or any secondary or tertiary surface characteristics can be changed so now the tubular design can be changed from the heat exchanger so this is a one thing which uh, newly came into the market and one of the beauty of the uh, one of the beauty of i will say in a 3d printing is a direct conversion of computer models so once you created a cad model go for the cfd and directly print it so the optimization uh, optimization uh, phase or i will say the r and d phase uh, get very uh, this phase get very fast so the cfd model can be directly printed uh, as we have seen from the la uh, last year last couple of years people are just uh, making the three phases cad then they are going for analysis and they are directly printing the thing and they are going for the they are validating their ideas so Uh, this is one of the beautiful things that a directly CFD or the optimized model can be physically prototype and can be tested. Suppose uh, so many work, students are working as CFDs, so they can go for ki humne, uh, we can, they created a model, they can go for the CFD and they can uh, see oh, is it working or not. So that is the one thing because in heat exchanger so many complex things are involved. You don't know how the things will work at the end when once you tested it. so you can go for the cfd conversation one of the uh, one of the latest thing which came into the heat exchanger from the side of additive manufacturing is optimization of uh, of shape the conformal cooling takes into the place where they are completely changing the revolutionized way the cooling we have seen and they are completely drastically paradigm the shift we have uh, in the way cooling are working conformal cooling as we all know the channel which take the part of the product contour is known as the conformal cooling so even in a heat transfer devices now the conformal cooling was totally uh, was a part of the injection molding industries or the dye industry what they were doing they were replacing the traditional coolings with the dmls or sml slm technologies now these uh, conformal coolings are coming into the every part of the heat exchanger so this is optimization of the shape so this is a very best thing where heat uh, where the role of the additive manufacturing into the heat transfer now if you will see what the materials we can go uh, the, what the materials we can use in a heat exchanger and the uh, how far we can go in that things so obviously metal the first choice is a metal nowadays we know that dmls is costly slm slm is costly but we have seen uh, very great efforts uh, like a, in a conformal cooling channels the people are reducing the cooling time from 50 to 20 50 to 20 seconds 80% cooling time are getting reduced so ultimately cycle time will be getting reduced and once the cycle time getting will be reduced you will get a more production and more Uh, output from these so even now there is a so many sectors where even dmls are justifying their cost so definitely in a metal uh, due to the higher conductivity and operating temperature capability uh, we can use into the heat exchanger now the key challenge is of using the metal into the heat exchanger is to metal oxidation so definitely we will go for the inert atmosphere of the argon and so on so 
we are nowadays we are using three things first one is a steel iron based alloy second one is a titanium alloy based alloy and third one is a nickel alloy based alloy they are most commonly printed all over the globe so okay one more things uh, recently we have seen uh, almost 99.9% dense uh, conformal cooling mold has been produced with a surface roughness of 20 microns so that was the uh, advances in 3d printed technologies okay and uh, this is a dear this is a one of the best example of where we can justify the dmls process uh it is a conformal cooling channel as i as i told you nearly 100% dense mold has been produced which reduces the cycle time from 38 second to 30 25 second in a, any production cycle if you will go to reduce the 10 second cycle time it will be more than enough so you are saving 36 hour means 1 lakh or 1.5 lakhs in a production cycle so, uh, from injection molding or any plastic injection molding technologies so these are the literature survey i have done and this is the recent advances in a heat transfers now what the new what we are they are doing they are creating the micro cross flow heat exchanger and uh, getting the good heat transfer coefficients with a hydraulic diameter of 0.9 mm as you all know the lyd ratio cannot be go beyond in a traditional manufacturing process but once you go into the 3d printing you can go for the lyd ratios the different different lyd ratios hello yeah prashant okay okay sir uh, now we have seen the complex twisted just check the slides are not moving prashant uh, sir optimization of shape i am on optimization of shape sir yeah it's it's fine now uh okay sir so is it okay right now yeah please continue okay sir uh, so sir we were talking about the dmls uh, now we we can see uh, uh sir it's sir i don't know what what happened uh, so just give me one minute okay sir uh okay sir uh, a full micro cross flow heat exchanger so now recently we have seen uh, the lyd we all know the lyd ratio is limited in any traditional manufacturing process but by using the 3d printing we can go for the uh, hydraulic diameter 0.9 mm and getting a very good heat transfer coefficient out of that uh, secondly we have seen the complex twisted tube heat exchanger optimized by cfd and directly printed so it is ultimately uh, 24 we get the pressure drop of 21% and a tube side pressure drop of 37% these model has been tested and experimentally validated uh, okay so the next one is a next if you will go into the depth uh, we can see the copper and aluminum can be also used but there is a several limitations of using these uh, these things because uh, because we can definitely the copper will be having a more thermal conductivity but once we use the copper we will see the rapid cooling rates are the issues and we can see the micro cracks even the copper can be own the printing of copper can be own challenges due to the thermal conductivity issues uh, while the heating getting about the mat so tangent is also the stress diminution and cracks are going on so still in aluminum are in are in the lines they are facing the several issues but definitely it can be printed and tested the polymer and the plastic beautifully the 3d printed touch this uh, era the touch this era the, the polymer and plastic nowadays heat exchanger are uh, are made up of the plastic materials and we are getting the very overall heat transfer coefficient uh, the, uh, the if, if you can see into the figure this is a pla polymer uh, this is a pla polymer 3d uh, 3d printed heat exchanger and the water cooling uh, around it and we get the 3% of overall thermal resistance only and the wall was just 150 micron 
and the output was the 35 to 120 watt per meter square thermal coefficient so now the paradigm shift when the people are thinking we cannot go with plastics for using the heat exchanger are getting diminished and we are moving into the plastic and uh, this is a, again a, uh, again we can see here we they use the nozzle pattern for the complicated internal flow path because once we go for the plastics there is a there is no problem with the chemical compatibility anti falling properties so uh, if we will, if we want to go for the electrical windings and we want to cool there so we can go with the plastics so definitely thermal conductivity is a issue but we can work over there uh, the challenges for heat transfer uh, challenges for heat transfer uh, by using the am definitely surface roughness sir this is a major problem because once you create the, any kind of the tubular structure or any other structure uh, we can see camera is uh, we can see if you if we use any kind of the tubular structure or jo any kind of the geometry the internal internal surface resistance offer so once we create it it is not a very every time very easy to uh, clear those parts the post processing where is critical critical task of polishing of these uh, pipes or the complex internal geometry is a critical part so this is the problem second one is a sir wall thickness uh, if we will go into the heat transfer definitely being uh, using a plastic material where the thermal resistance will be the more so the very very light uh, so very, very thin very thin plastic uh, shell has to be used so wall thickness is one of the crucial issue powder removal definitely powder removal is also an issue uh, once we use into the channel geometry sometimes it get uh, melted it sometimes it get trapped so sometimes it get uh, uh, corrugated so the final Uh, tube geometry changed so the powder removal is also issue uh, the people are nowadays using the ct scanning to find out the where is the powder are concentrated where is the much more powder are fabricated so these are the problem still we are facing into the heat transfer so conclusion if you will go into the complete literature of heat exchanger we can find definitely the next generation solution for process uh, for process industries and heat transfer industries if the multidisciplinary experts like uh, material science experts mold designers engineering professionals or different different 3d printing experts if they will come into the place so definitely we can create a next generation heat exchangers uh, definitely there is a limitation but we can go forward for this thank you sir Uh, thank you very much, Prashant. Uh, it's a very nice, comprehensive review. Uh, may I know in which year of uh, PhD are you? Uh, sir, I'm a first year, first sem. Okay, that's a good one to present for that. Okay, so I just have a small, quick question. Another to ask is, uh, what information are you getting from this review? Like, are you setting anything out of it? Uh, only one thing you can. Oh, yes, sir. To get it out of it. uh sir i just want to replace the dmls technology sir in a conformal cooling because it's a it's a very costly technology so i thought of if we can drill the mold from its top surface suppose sir we have a core and cavity we have a core and cavity so from from cavity top surface we can drill across the part geometry so i i want to use traditional manufacturing technique as uh, instead of dmls technology sir Okay, it's a nice one. Thank you. So now, Professor Prashant, uh, you can carry on if you have anything to ask, sir, or the audience maybe. Just want to ask. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Thank you, Prashant. Okay. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, we move on to next presentation. Okay. Next. Paper ID thirty-nine. Yes, sir. Doc. Yes, sir. I'm ready. Sir. Or, yes. Okay, PT. PT. Yes. Yeah, okay, please. Yes, sir. So 
can you able to see my slide? Yes, yeah, visible. Can I start? Yeah, please. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Myself, uh, Preeti K H, Department of IEM, Bangalore Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I'm presenting a paper on finite element analysis of AL7075 alloy joints produced by friction stir welding for limited energy consumption. Introduction. Alloys play an important role in several manufacturing industries. The strength of an alloy after welding determines its application and qualities. Alloys play an important role in manufacturing components like fuel tanks of aerospace vehicles, manufacturing of ships, manufacturing of several other industrial components. A designer can incur losses in terms of time and revenue if the material does not possess the required characteristics after welding. After welding, a material produces a certain characteristics which are undesirable like fragility, a very high level of fragility or high level of decomposition, then the material cannot be used for required intention. Finite element analysis empowers the manufacturer to visualize the energy consumption, strength and characteristics of a given material before the actual welding processes. The methodology used in this paper can help several manufacturing industries to produce excellent quality materials and avoid losses of time, energy resources, and money. Friction stir welding. What is friction stir welding? Friction stir welding basically consists of a tool which rotates and moves across the workpiece. The tool consists of a shoulder and a pin. The shoulder rotates on the surface of the workpiece to produce friction force by which the structure of the material changes and recrystallization takes place to alter the characteristics of the material. Next, finite element analysis. Finite, and finite element analysis comes from the finite element methods here, entire structure has been divided into finite number of elements. The entire setup of the tool and the workpiece is broken down into finite number of elements using finite element modeling. Each element is analyzed individually for the parameters of stress, deformation, and temperature. This gives a clear visualization of the effect of heat at various combinations of rotational and traverse speeds. This is the three-dimensional model of setup developed in the ANSYS. A three-dimensional model of the setup is developed in ANSYS Workbench 2020 R2. The model is assigned with mechanical and thermal boundary conditions to simulate it, it in an environment similar to actual welding. This model is analyzed for strength and temperature using finite element analysis. Meshing. Figure shows the mesh geometry of the model. The most important step of finite element analysis is meshing, wherein the structure is meshed into finite number of elements and nodes for analysis. This geometry consists of 19,763 nodes and 15,467 elements. Exciadal element was considered for meshing. Each element is analyzed for stress and deformation, which is further validated using actual hardware experimental setup. So here the tool joins the workpiece together. And uh, this is the temperature results where it is seen that the maximum temperature of 715 degrees Celsius is reached in a time of 40 seconds for a rotational speed of 1000 RPM and a traverse speed of 100 millimeter per minute. So here the tool uses the two kinds of uh, speeds. One is the rotational speed of 1000 RPM and a traverse speed of 100 millimeter per minute and it, and it is traversing longitudinally. So the above figure uh, shows the resultant materials obtained after the actual welding. So the test samples are retrieved from these materials which has been welded. 
and which shows the characteristics of the welded material. Ultimate tensile strength. Figure shows the uh, results of ultimate tensile strength obtained by simulation and experimental methods. It is observed that the results are in close match with each other, where S is the rotational speed and F denotes the traverse speed. So it is seen. Uh, it is seen that a maximum value of around 221 MPa is obtained from both experimental and simulation values. Next comes power consumption. So here a figure shows the results of power consumption obtained by simulation and experimental methods. This result illustrates the use of the proposed methodology to estimate power consumption. A maximum of 3 kilowatt is said to be consumed or obtained by simulation as well. So by this methodology, we can estimate the power or energy required to form this kind of procedure. With this kind of energy consumption estimation, any welding manufacturing processes in the industry can be optimized to consume optimal energy and then reduce the wastage of energy resources. If the manufacturer knows before and the characteristics of the materials required to be produced, we can adjust its input parameters in such a way that the optimum characteristics or the optimum or the maximum output is produced with minimum energy consumption. This we can visualize using the methodology of computer edit engineering, which requires them to perform a finite element analysis and finite element method before actual manufacturing processes. So before uh, the manufacturing itself, the manufacturer or industries knows his energy requirements, which he can identify and optimize before going to the actual manufacturing processes. Conclusions. In accordance with the results obtained, it can be concluded that finite element analysis can be used as the primary step for manufacturing materials using welding. Finite element analysis, which is a computer aided engineering method, uh, when used for analysis before manufacturing, can empower the manufacturers with a clear visualization of the resultant material characteristics and energy consumption of the processes. These kinds of methodologies, if used in manufacturing, can help to reduce the dependence of the manufacturing industries on non-renewable sources of energy. So these are the references that I have used. Thank you. Okay, Preeti. Yes, material which you are used that is a L seven zero seven five. What is the significance of this number seven zero seven five? Significance. The main uh, element uh, is uh, It's a commercial element. It is used for transportation purpose. It is a 7000 series of alloy. It is a e treatable alloy. What is the significance of this number 7075? Uh, significance. So, the major alloying element here it is the zinc. Uh, it is used in uh, aerospace industries and uh, transportation industries. Okay, how much percentage uh, variation was there in uh, simulated and experimental result? Yeah, 5%, within 5%. Within 5%? Yes. What was the boundary condition you considered? So, we have used purpose? here thermal boundary conditions and mechanical boundary conditions. So, uh, uh, at the ends of the plates, uh, we fixed and the bottom of the plates we fixed, that is thermal boundary conditions. Uh, so, the 
and we have used mechanical boundary conditions. Convection boundary conditions we have used for thermal. Arok, sir. Yes, I have a question to ask Ms. Priti. Uh, whether it yes. was a constant temperature or constant heat flux, what did you fix at the wall of the... Did you fix the heat flux or the temperatures? So we have used convection heat to, to fix up the uh, material. Convection heat we have used. Like... Uh, So your place is always heated with a certain heat We have used constant heat flux, sir. Here the temperature varies. I want to know, yeah. Yes, temperature is varying. Yeah, you have fixed mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I want to know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Who is next? Any, now? any more questions from the audience? No. So this was the last presentation. Uh, so I request both the session chair to please conclude the session. So there were total six present six papers have been presented, and some of the papers were very excellent. They were presented nicely. So congratulations to you all for presenting the papers in the international conference. Parukh, Thank you, Prashant. Yeah, Parukh, so sir. with uh, adding on to what uh, Professor Prashant has said, uh, I would also like to thank uh, Professor uh, Dr. Viresh and Dr. Prashant for moving this session very smoothly. And Dr. Prashant uh, has moved it uh, in a nicer way. And uh, I would also like to thank all the presenters who have presented their work here and giving us their valuable time. And thank you. That's it on my side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you, for achieving this and giving valuable suggestions to the participants. We uh, stop here for this session and uh, we'll. Stay connected. We'll have a next uh, expert talk by Farooq sir uh, in five minutes. So please be connect. Stay connected. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sir. Prashant sir, you were saying something.
Rani ma'am, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, please. So can we start with the presentation of sir? Yeah, please start the session. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's my pleasure that I'm inviting Dr. Farooq Khalid, sir, for his talk on sustainable hydrogen production. But before that, let me introduce sir. Sir is currently working as an assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering at Istini University, Turkey. His research interests are in sustainable and renewable energy system, green building, nuclear desalinization, waste management, thermochemical cycle for hydrogen production, high temperature electrolysis, energy analysis. Sir has published more than 40 papers in high quality journal and conferences. He currently serves as the topic editor of Scopus Induct Journal, namely Environments published by MDPI and consultant for International Atomic Energy Agency, Vienna, Austria. Additionally, Sir has also served as a resource person for various GYAN courses conducted by Government of India. Sir has done his PhD in Mechanical Engineering from Ontario Tech University, Canada. Prior to he has also worked as postdoctoral research at Hamad bin Khalifa University. He also works as a research assistant at the Ontario Technical University, Canada. He is an active reviewer of more than more than dozens of international record journals such as Energy Con Conversion Management, IJEX, IJER, etc. Engineering College Bajpada is highly welcomed. Highly welcomes you, sir. We are very honored to have you, sir. Sir, you can start with your presentation now. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Rajni, for such uh, nice and kind words of me. Uh, I think, uh, is my presentation visible to all of you? Yes, sir, your presentation is visible. Okay, perfectly fine. So, <clears throat> as been informed by the coordinator or uh, uh, conference chair, I have to stick with the time, so I will try to wrap up my presentation in 30 minutes. So today, <clears throat> so good evening, uh, because it's uh, evening in India. So I would say that good evening to all. And uh, so we will talk about the energy conversion. Uh, that's uh, conventional, from conventional sources of technology to sustainable technology. Uh, and my main focus uh, today would be on hydrogen production methods. And in this hydrogen production, uh, I will uh, basically deal with the thermochemical cycle. So I will give you a uh, little bit idea what is this thermochemical cycle and about that. So we will deal in that. 
So, in order to first uh, advocate my case, why we need hydrogen, uh, there is a thing to understand that. So, the total or environment impact uh, can be written as a factor of three things. Uh, that are the key three things. Uh, those would be one is, uh, as we all know, is the population. So, we are seven point two billion currently. Then uh, it's the amount of consumption per person. Everybody needs uh, energy to drive his or her life. So this is very important. And then what? Uh, from where we are getting this energy? So what is the impact of that energy per consumption is there? So this is also factor. So this is can be written as the factor of these three things or a multiplier of these three things. The first two factors uh, are something uh, that are not. Uh, be easy to control or cannot be controlled in fortnight. For example, population you cannot control this in a fortnight or a couple of years or something. So for that you need a bigger planning on that. And uh, for a country like India and China, uh, we didn't want to control uh, that as much as possible because uh, to us uh, we see population as a boon, not as a curse. So that is the thing. And uh, the consumption per person, as I told you, it is also not a good uh, idea to control it or to reduce it. Because it is directly related to the development of that. For example, in the countries like US, uh, Qatar, or other countries, we see that the amount of energy one is consuming is much much higher uh, compared to the developing countries like India or Africa. When we go to the poor countries, the consumption of energy is very low because it has been directly related to how many devices I am using. For example, I need my iPhone to get charged, my laptop to get charged, and everything is my electric vehicles and so many things. So basically, day by day, this consumption is going to increase per person. So it's not a good idea to decrease it. But otherwise, we move into the primitive ages. Now, the only way uh, that left around is uh, to reduce the overall environmental impact is uh, by using the sources what we are using, or uh, to reduce the environmental impact of those resources. So, how much uh, the uh, environmental impact, the consumption we are making. So, if uh, somehow we are able to reduce that, then eventually we are able uh, to reduce the overall environmental impact. Uh, so, this is uh, make a case. As we can see in the case uh, on the left hand side. This graph uh, shows that uh, when we switch or move from uh, conventional sources of technologies like uh, lignite, coal, oil, natural gas to solar, biomass, and nuclear, uh, the greenhouse emissions are reduced significantly. Which eventually uh, make a case that uh, these uh, technologies should be used or will be used in the nearby future for gaining power and for energy generation. Now, in this, uh, the main. Uh, uh, that uh, promising uh, type of energy that remains is the solar energy. So it is considered as one of the promising uh, renewable energy solution. However, it has certain drawbacks. Uh, those drawbacks are that it is, have uh, some intermittent and the fluctuating nature. For example, the sun is not available throughout the year and it is not constantly available throughout the day as well. For example, we don't have any sun in the night and its variation changes throughout the day as well. So at the 10 a.m., let's say something, uh, radiations are different, at 11 a.m. is different. So. Uh, this is its intermittent and uh, fluctuating nature. So, how to cope with that? Uh, whenever we have that such kind of intermittency, uh, we need to deal with that as well. And uh, sometimes, uh, what we have our design systems are producing more power than what we have designed them for. For example, so then we have to use them what to do with the excess energy out of it. So, there is a need for energy storage as well. So, that will also act. So, in that case, uh, hydrogen can be or could be one of the good uh, candidate for that. So it will act as a good uh, storage uh, medium because, and it can also be considered as an uh, energy carrier. So hydrogen is basically not a fuel, it's a kind of energy carrier. So you can carry your energy in hydrogen form and it can also be used for uh, transportation sector and it could be uh, give you clean combustion if it's produced from renewable and it is considered as a green fuel if it is being come from renewable energy sources. Now, in order to capture the total <coughs> energy production, uh, the picture of the total energy production or the um, energy use, we have to look at the 3S cycle. Uh, so what does 3S cycles means that we have to uh, look at the source from which the energy is coming, uh, by which system we are converting our energy and by what kind of services we are getting out of it. Like for example, we are using different products like are we getting heating, cooling, electricity, refrigeration or so many other products. So we have to look uh, uh, not only the focus on the renewable side or the source side, but we have to look at the system side as the service side. So that's why we have to have that one as well into this. 
So we have to look into that as well. And uh, as you can see in this graph, uh, in the primitive area, uh, era, the human uh, mankind has taken its energy needs. Uh, earlier, we were used, uh, in, still we are using in some part of uh, uh, country uh, wood to get our primary energy. So in uh, as we see in some villages, we burn the wood and cook our food and do other uh, activities. But uh, that has higher carbon ratio, which eventually polluting the environment. So our objective is to reduce this carbon ratio as much as we can. So that we can go to the fuel that got hydrogen that has uh, literally no carbon in it. So that would be gain us more energy into it. So uh, and then um, switching uh, towards from natural gas to nuclear energy, renewable energy, and then from renewable energy to produce different fuels like hydrogen, ammonia, and other synthetic fuel like methanol and other. So that kind of thing we need to do. So as I told you that the what uh, comes in the renewable or the source side. It could be renewable sources uh, that may come from solar, wind, hydro, biomass, geothermal, OTAC, tidal, or wave, or many different types of renewable we can have. Then the different types of systems, what can we use is uh, Rankine cycle, Britain, absorption, cooling. So based on what services we need, we have different types of system for our energy conversion thing. Then the services, as I told you, I have been, uh, it depends upon what we need. Uh, it could be electricity, cooling, heating, hydrogen, ammonia, synthetic fuel, methanol, ethan also, it depends upon many of the products as well. Now, as we all know that uh, what is the uh, <coughs> comparison between renewable and conventional energy sources, so most of us know that uh, uh, renewable energy sources are primarily the locally available sources, so they are not uh, being concentrated on one part of the, like for example, the fossil fuel is mainly, or the oil or the natural gas, they are mainly reserved or being in the Middle East of the world. But uh, this solar is available everywhere, so that makes us it's uh, more energy security. It provides a better energy security. So for example, the countries like uh, Middle East, somewhere where this been located, so we cannot have uh, that energy security in that. And then uh, it's almost free at the source side because you don't need to spend anything to uh, have the sun. So at the source side, it's free, but the technology is costly, you know, through which you are harnessing this. So, but uh, eventually, in, uh, we see that it is been decreasing day by day. So now the cost of uh, what is you produce from PV or from the CSP plant is uh, getting much, much lower than the, what we're getting from the fossil fuel. So which eventually that uh, the fossil fuel may be erased out in coming future or fade out. Now, uh, there are certain challenges that has been associated with the renewable energy sources. As I told you in the very beginning, those were the intermediate and the fluctuating nature. And the other thing is uh, that we deal with the renewable energy sources is that they are not that much energy efficient. So we need to make them much, much more efficient. Like, uh, for example, the solar PV, if you want to extract energy from a solar PV, single solar PV cell, the energy efficiency cannot go beyond more than 20 to 25%. So you have to make them more efficient. How you are going to make them or to overcome those challenges? So the potential solutions could be uh, the to overcome the challenge of uh, intermittent and the fluctuating nature of one source. You can do it by integrating uh, different types of energy sources. Like, for example, you uh, integrate get your solar with the uh, biomass so whenever there is solar is available you run your system on solar when it's not available you run it on biomass or for example you are not achieving certain temperature you burn your biomass to get the temperature or something like that in a corporation you can have that so that kind of integration you can do it solar wind is also good so different combinations you can make out of it and in order to increase uh, or to make your system more efficient uh, you can deal with uh, making it uh, instead of producing one output you can produce uh, multiple useful outputs like uh, uh, heating, cooling, electricity, refrigeration, and that. So those types of systems in which uh, you produce uh, more than four useful outputs or more than three useful outputs, we call that systems as multi-generation or polygeneration systems. So up to three useful outputs we call it PRI, up to two we call it CO. And so if it is more than three, we call it uh, classify them as multi-generation systems. Now, as I told you to <coughs> deal with the problem of the whenever you have uh, excess electricity or excess source of energy, how to deal with it. So that uh, can be taken care of by producing uh, the synthetic fuel. For example, at one site in the nuclear power plant or somewhere else, uh, I have my excess electricity. So how, what uh, I have to do with that excess electricity? Instead, uh, in some power plants or somewhere, they just uh, release that steam into the environment. They don't produce power. But uh, you can produce uh, some synthetic fuel like hydrogen, ammonia, and then you can transport that fuel on one place to other places where there is no such kind of systems are there available. So this way you can basically uh, 
transport your or use your synthetic fuel and this synthetic fuel can be used for power production or they can be uh, act as an input to some industries as well now uh, how to see that how these services as i was talking about how they are going to important or how they are sustainable is that so their sustainability depends upon various factors for example you are getting something from a fossil fuel plant and you are only producing power so the amount of uh, <coughs> thing that you are getting is not that much green as compared to if you have something that you are getting from a renewable system producing multiple outputs so that would be much much more greener much much more sustainable compared to what we have in that case so in this regard i have designed one of the systems uh, that has been on the most cited paper from 2015 so that was such system as i was talking to about you that uh, what was it uh, so it was a solar biomass integrated system that was used for multi generation purposes so for outputs were there so you can refer to this paper or see it in more detail what we have discussed so now uh, as i told the main focus of the today's lecture would be on the hydrogen production method side so as we know that uh, there are many ways of producing hydrogen whether it comes under the renewable category or the conventional category so we have lots of methods to produce them so in the solar we can have a photoelectrochemical route then we have photocatalytic route then simple we have a water electrolysis route then biological hydrogen gasification and other routes are there so my main focus uh, today will be on the thermochemical cycle so these are basically a series of chemical reactions in which uh, the only uh, i can say that uh, the reusable uh, other chemicals are reusable and the only consumables are water electricity and heat so basically you are consuming water heat and electricity certain part of it so those cycles are basically hybrid cycle that work on heat and work so work is basically electricity in the form of that and though we have uh, the other chemicals uh, uh, so it's a series of uh, having a chemical reaction so i will show you how it looks like and how the things are there in this thermochemical cycles so there are many cycles available in the literature and they has been classified based on the maximum temperature that you require for one of the steps in that cycle so as we can see that uh, hybrid sulfur cycle is one of them hybrid cadmium cycle then zinc oxide iron oxide and hybrid copper chloride cycle is there so they has been classified based on the maximum temperature they require so in order to operate the hybrid sulfur cycle you require a temperature of at least 850 degree because one of the step uh, requirement is that you require that much amount of temperature to initiate the state or to go for it so we can see the, from this table that the least temperature that is being required by is the hybrid copper chloride cycle so and the temperature is around 530 degrees celsius so this is one of the uh, <coughs> cycle that is being uh, used for hydrogen production so this cycle is uh, Uh, copper uh, basically properly popularly known as copper chlorine cycle or cucl cycle at uh, ontario tech we have a very big system of this uh, so this is a pilot plant for this cycle is there as well so as i told you that this cycle comprises of uh, different chemical reactions so you can see that it has a set of four chemical reactions one step is called the hydrolysis step there is the thermolysis electrolysis and drying so when you combine all of them all the steps you can see the only consumable is h2o then some amount of uh, amount of heat because all the other chemicals uh, that is been produced in this cycle are coming from one or other step for example in the first step co2 cl is there and that has been consumed in the second step and then the co cl is been used to produce a third step and then third step is used to produce the fourth so it is like in a cycle one step goes to other and other goes to like that so the only thing that uh, you require as a input in this cycle is let's say h2o and the amount of thermal energy and work what output i am getting is oxygen and hydrogen those are my output so all the other things has been recycled inside so <coughs> there's uh, as you can notice on the right very right hand side of this uh, this table the temperature variations is very much for example one step is carrying out at 400 degrees celsius the other is work was to carry out this electrolysis at higher temperature why not we carry out this uh, at uh, instead of 90 to some other temperature so based on that uh, i have proposed different schemes or different uh, chemical cycles and one of them is uh, uh, i call it a scheme one for hydrogen production where i have uh, increased the temperature from 500 degrees celsius to 500 degrees celsius from that uh, 90 degrees celsius and now the challenge is uh, how to make it a recycle one as well 
So the only objective was not to because we don't want to consume anything. So the only consumable, uh, the constraint was there. The consumable could be electricity, water, or thermal energy. So you don't want any other input in your system. So they have to design or think about certain calculation in such a fashion that all the chemicals or the things would be recycled. So we were able to come up with this and we measure its performance in terms of energy and exergy. Similarly, <coughs> the experiments were also carried out to see whether, uh, because we're proposing some new reaction for that, whether those reactions were physically possible or not. And uh, we were successfully able to do those reactions and we were able to find that uh, because this uh, reaction, as I told you, at 90 degrees Celsius has been carried or read by various researchers in the past. So it has been well understood. But uh, at 500 degree or 550 degree, nobody has studied. So I was the one who studied it and we found that, okay, this reaction is being possible. Similarly, in order to further require, because these cycles are, as I told you, were requiring uh, heat and work. So our task is to have that uh, those requirements as minimum as possible as well because they are consuming our work or heat. So the task is to reduce them. So in order to reduce the work requirement, we combine two of the step of the previous cycle and come over this and we get a little bit less work or less work is being required in that. So in order to further reduce the work requirement, we change the phase of the electrolysis from liquid phase to make it to the gaseous phase. So we know that uh, in the gaseous phase, the entropy would be higher, which eventually uh, lead to the decrease in the voltage requirement. So we have a uh, required less voltage compared to what we require in the liquid electrolysis. So that was one of the thing. And in order to further reduce the complexity or the cost of the cycle, the two steps were being combined. Now, in order to see, as I told you in the very beginning, that uh, you cannot have one particular solution for uh, one particular energy problems because energy problems are, are something uh, like uh, where we need to have a different specialized solution for a specialized problem. So you cannot generalize your solution. So based on your problem, you can propose the solution. So same goes with these schemes as well. I cannot say that one scheme is uh, the uh, scheme that we are looking for. No, there are different schemes based on your constraints, your conditions. So you can have use uh, that scheme. So as a scheme one uh, was uh, good in this sense that it does not require any costly membrane to carry out the ions or something. So there was no need for that membrane. So it can be used. Uh, the uh, disadvantage, or I say the constraint on that side wise is that uh, since it has some solid into it, so one of the processes is the batch process, uh, not uh, because liquids and e uh, gases are easier to move compared to the solids uh, in a cycle or something. Now, uh, the another th thing uh, that the scheme to, to overcome that challenge of, uh, let's say, batch processing or something, we make all our processes continuous uh, by introduction of the membrane into the cycle. But again, the membrane has its own advantages and disadvantages. First of all, the membranes are very because these require very specialized kind of membrane, hydrogen membranes. So those are very temperature sensitive and those are basically uh, chemical sensitive as well. So that eventually increases the cost of the system and other things. So wherever you have that kind of thing, so you constrain for that, you can use them. So based on that. Now, the another cycle, the, by changing the phase, uh, as I told you, we further require the uh, reduce the voltage. So the advantage was that uh, we were able to reduce the more voltage in that. So low voltage requirement was there. Now, when we combine scheme three, the steps of the scheme three, the chlorination and H2 production and electrolytic step, uh, we come up with, uh, when we combine step one and step two, uh, we get the one step that is hydrolysis and decomposition. So basically we got the fewer steps and reduce uh, losses and eventually the cost of the system. So a uh, comparison study has been made uh, for different schemes and it is found that the scheme four was much better in performance energy and exergy compared to what we have. And then the cost analysis was also done. And it says that uh, the cost of the proposed cycle was in some between what we are using uh, for other cycles. So it is not costly as well. So it is not something that you create uh, that is uh, beyond your cost limits or something like that. It is within those cost limits as well. Now, uh, I don't want to throw out my first cycle. So what I do have to do with the first cycle, like I thought uh, I put uh, some thought into it. I say that why not uh, try to kill uh, two birds with one stone? So as we know that uh, copper waste is also one of the issues uh, we are facing because uh, as the increase of the renewable energy is increasing day by day, 
So these uh, uh, PV panels, other things have been increases, use of them is increases, but they create lots of waste as well because uh, what will happen to the uh, PV panel after 20, 15 years, you have to throw it. So it has lots of copper into it. Same goes with the wind turbines and other things. So in order to get the copper out of that, uh, those waste components or waste waste turbine or other things, so how you're going to get that out of it? So the conventional method is that we do the melting process for that. But uh, we know that the copper has a very higher melting point. So the melting requires immense amount of energy to do that. So instead of uh, going through that uh, melting route uh, to produce the uh, uh, copper, uh, the pure copper, I say give that copper to me. I will produce uh, hydrogen out of it as well as give you the pure copper. So that's what I do. So my inputs now become two inputs. That is the water input as well as the copper waste input. So from that, I'm getting the hydrogen, oxygen, and copper. So that was the thing the, by this innovative cycle. Uh, this will uh, basically open a new uh, uh, direction in the area of waste management as well. So for example, this is for the copper-based cycle is for copper. It can go to bromine or other different steps as well based on different uh, applications. So this can be easily being coupled or being fit to other metals as well, AL2, 3 or other metals. It can go to them as well. Now, in order to further reduce the uh, mode or this uh, continuity of that cycle, so I carried out why not uh, make the cycle much more continuous by removing uh, the, uh, like for example, your uh, this uh, solid uh, movements or other thing, the step four as we discussed about. So we come up with something called as a two-step hydrogen production cycle where we just have only the phases, only the gases. So we carried out and we found performance compared to what we have for our literal uh, water electrolysis. So we found that uh, compared to the high temperature steam water electrolysis, at these condition, the amount of voltage required was uh, much higher compared to what uh, if someone uses my cycle. Now, uh, to carry out uh, this, uh, as I told you, that uh, this uh, can be taken further to methanol production or other things. So we know that the conventional method to produce uh, methanol is that uh, first you have to get hydrogen from some source, then you have to have CO2, then you have to compress them, and then you have to take them to a uh, methanol reactor. So this methanol reactor is uh, basically a high pressure, a low temperature reactor, where you have required pressure of around 200 to 300 bar a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. So as we know that CO2 is a gas, so it requires or it consumes lots of power to compress uh, this CO2. So it has been a quite uh, energy challenging. So if you want to produce the methanol from CO2 or convert your CO2 to methanol and same goes with hydrogen because it requires lots of power to compress hydrogen as well. So uh, we thought, uh, we put a thought into it. We say that why not we go with the conventional, uh, instead of this conventional method, why don't we go with the, uh, basically with the electrolytic route or the thermochemical cycle route. So we come up with the two-step cycle and our result shows that uh, <coughs> the efficiency for the conventional process was around 33%, but if someone uses my cycle, he can go up to 37%. So that was the thing. And uh, now to summarize the thing uh, that in order to understand the better sustainability of the thing, so sustainability based on the various things. So it depends upon efficiency. So if you have a better efficiency, the system will be much more sustainable. It depends on the better design and analysis part. If your analysis and designs are much, much better, so it will be much more sustainable. It also depends upon the cost effectiveness of the system. Like for example, if your system is let's say too costly, then it would not be sustainable to be used everywhere. So you have to look at the cost part of them. So it needs to be cost effective as well. And then uh, the overall picture that it has to be how uh, basically using environment in much better way. For example, it has to produce less waste. So it should be much better environmental friendly as well. And uh, the other thing uh, that is about that uh, it shouldn't generate much more waste. So it has to smartly manage its resources as well. So the better uh, resource use will be there. And then as I talk about that, it should be energy secure as well. So you shouldn't be the system that you design or the resources or something. It shouldn't be uh, like, for example, it should not be restricted to one place. Like, for example, we have oil that's restricted to the Middle East. So the energy security of India, let's say, can be happy from that. If somehow, let's say, so Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all these countries say that we are not giving you oil or something in the nearby future. So our energy demand, how we are going to meet them. So we have to think in that the earth and neighbor thing as we are floating nowadays, this earth and neighbor. 
so we have to become um, nearby in sense of energy as well so we have to have our energy security as well and uh, we know that uh, nature is giving us and we are blessed to have in a country like india we are blessed with this uh, loss of sun is there loss of uh, wind is there different part of this so we have to uh, smart it so manage it smartly now some brainstorming idea for the uh, newcomers or uh, those who want to do research in the area of uh, renewable energy so you can uh, produce uh, make your system and think about the what types of services you need and what type of system you can have so you can use thermochemical cycles instead of uh, simple water electrolysis you can go for thermochemical cycles or instead of uh, using uh, let's say turbine to produce power you can use your fuel cell then uh, you have different thermal energy storage and then instead of uh, using some conventional uh, refrigeration system like vapor compression and that you can use vapor absorption chillers other things so that type of things is there and instead of producing hydrogen you can produce it uh, like uh, the other fuels like ammonia or you can have a synthetic fuel production as i told you methanol ethanol and other things and the water is also another issue that we are going to face so you can uh, the desalination also opens a lots of opportunities for the young researchers those who want to work in this area or in this field so they can work all into that area as well so desalination is also key for us so for us uh, that's why we say food energy water nexus is very important so energy is also important water is also important and food so you can take further this thing into greenhouses or other areas as well uh, that's what i have for you thank you yeah thank you thank you so much sir yeah any questions from the audience the session is open for questions if anyone has any questions please ask anybody want to discuss anything yeah. yeah don't shy you can ask me anything you know you don't need to be shy you can ask me anything any suggestions or you may wrote to me any time you know if you want any career uh, suggestion or something like that so it shouldn't be let's say technical side you know Uh, anything you want to discuss you can discuss with me you can take my email from dr viresh he can provide you my email and you can do to me any time and i respond to emails within 5 to 6 hours usually so you can discuss any career advice anything you want so i'm just like your friend okay so that's the thing we have and i would be more than happy to help you and i would say one more thing about this uh, conference is that i really like the idea that the students are basically attending the only thing that i don't uh, like that which is that they are not participating like for example they are not participating in the discussion you are not asking things you know you don't need to be afraid so you have to ask uh, this is a small suggestion to my students uh, the young ones but the good thing is that they are participating i really like that that they are taking it very seriously so this is what we have now dr varesh if you have anything to ask yeah. anything yeah thank you very much sir for your exhaustive uh, presentation on hydrogen production uh, i hope uh, the audience would have been benefited and maybe uh, they may have some insight or ignite some something in their mind so that they can work on hydrogen production in india as well uh, only thing i just wanted to discuss is uh, what about the hazardous aspect of this uh, use of hydrogen uh there are challenges associated with that uh, but uh, those are not something uh, that cannot be cope up so you know that oxygen is much more dangerous than hydrogen if oxygen rate combusts it is much more uh, dangerous than hydrogen yeah definitely so we need to have uh, people are working in that so, but that could not stop us in that so it's a kind of a myth i would say you know so people are using yeah and our fuel tank uh, car what we are using it's a uh, living bomb you know if something happen in our vehicles they are still very dangerous you know but still we are using you know how comfortable we are so. okay th thank you very much sir uh, for your time uh, thank you uh, now we'll start the um, last session of the conference uh, i request uh, uh, ma'am to please uh,
welcome the session chair and introduce them. Yes, sir. Yes. So, moving on to the third technical session. The session chair for this session are Dr. Anuparya sir and Dr. Akshay Pandya sir. Before starting the oral presentation, let me give a brief introduction about the session chair speakers. Dr. Anup Arya. Dr. Anup Arya has done his PhD at, from MANIT Bhopal. Sir is currently working as Associate Professor in Electrical Engineering Department at Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. Sir has guided two PhD students and more than 25 MTech students are being supervised and are being supervised and many more are underway. Sir has completed three sponsored research projects received from DST, MPCST, and Ministry of Electronics and IT. Sir is also recipient of Young Faculty Research Fellow from Ministry of Electronics and IT, Government of India. His research interest includes power system optimization, distribu distribution automation, power system economics, power markets, and artificial intelligence application to power system. He is also a reviewer of various reputed national and international journals. We, we heartily welcome you, sir. Moving on to the next session chair, Dr. Akshay A. Pandya, sir. Sir is presently working as an associate professor in electrical engineering department at BVM Engineering College, Anand, Gujarat. Sir has done his PhD from SICRT, SP University, Wallab Vidyanagar. He has wide teaching experience of approximately 22 years with 6.5 years of ind industrial experience. He has published around 36 papers in the international, national journals and conferences. Sir has guided 23 MTech students in their project thesis work. Sir is also a reviewer of the reputed international and national journal paper, some of which include IETE Journal of Education of Taylor and Francis, Electrical Power Components and System of Taylor and Francis Online. He is also working as a referee of evaluating the research project proposal of Science and Engineering Research Board. Sir has delivered many expert talks across the country. He has also been the session chair during various conferences. Engineering College Baswada heartily welcomes you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, from now you can take the charge of session chair and we can start with the oral presentations. So it's a kind request that please evaluate the presentations provided the evaluation sheet as per provided evaluation sheet. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. So you can start with the presentation, sir. Okay. <coughs> so, the first paper in the session is uh, paper ID 11, Ashish Raj. Good afternoon, sir. I am uploading my presentation. Uh, yeah, please share your presentation. Sir, do we have some time limitations for presentation yes, questions? Sir. The presentation time is 10 minutes and 5 minutes are for question and answers. Okay, okay, fine. So I please request both the session here to please take uh, take charge of the session. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening to all dignitaries and uh, audience. Myself, Asi Raj. Uh, I'm going to present my paper titled Design and Simulation of uh, Improved Particle Swarm Optimization Based MPPT system for solar photovoltaic system under partial shaded and variable irradiance condition. Uh, this paper is going to be presented on international conference on recent advances in renewable energy sources. And I thank organizers to give me a chance to present my paper. So uh, starting with my presentation, my presentation Ashish, is... Ashish. Ashish. Yes, sir. Please go to the slideshow. You have not shown the slideshow. Yes, sir. Actually, just a minute. Sir. Mm. 
sir is my slide changing or not yeah it's changing but you have not uh, is gone to the slide show means your slide show is not working i think or what uh, i have started slide show from my side whether it is uh, visible there or not okay fine you continue make it full screen sorry for asking that full screen okay this time it sir you have to switch off of, you have to switch off your camera then yes sir uh, this time it sir i am correcting it some problem is coming switch off your camera then start the presentation okay sir now share your slide and go to the slide show okay sir sir is it visible no you have not shared yet you have not yet you have not shared the screen is it visible sir now yeah it is visible now clearly visible now for go ahead please for the team uh, so uh, my paper is on design simulation and uh, assessment of uh, part improved particle sound optimization based mppt system for partial shaded and uh, variable irradiance condition so this uh, i am working on the topic of renewable energy particularly with solar pv system so the motive reason behind this research is the uh, global awareness and potential of solar energy due to ongoing missions by the government of india and over the world and as we know that uh, solar mission national solar mission is uh, had was started in the year 2009 and it aims to add lot of uh, 100 gigawatt more than 100 gigawatt of solar energy through different uh, realms of uh, installations and the plan of the government is to enhance and efficiency of the existing system as well as to develop capacity building among the uh, uh, human manpower in india so we 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 uh, started our research on this particular topic and as we know that there are two main categories from which we can use the utilize the solar energy one is thermal and solar thermal system and another one is solar photovoltaic system now since these solar pv systems are being installed uh, in a abundant way here and uh, among all organizations so there are lot of uh, limitations and a lot of problems also associated with the system so we have targeted the problem of uh, partial shaded condition because uh, the partial shading have a lot of impact on the operational efficiency of solar pv system because uh, they because as we know that solar pv system is a dynamic system which performance depends on the operational conditions like irradiation temperature as well as the behavior of material so for, to analyze that thing we started with the diode based modeling of the pv cell we have worked on a, a, a simple diode model and through which we have simulated the electrical characteristics of the pv system uh, we have simulated this diode characteristics and to analyze the temperature dependency to analyze the effect of irradiation and through with the modeling of diode we also modeled the panels now by the analysis by the characteristic analysis of panel we can see that the our the panel is having variable type of behavior when it is without it is shading uh, when without shading we simulate our pv system there is a simple behavior with single peak of power in pv characteristics which changes its value with respect to irradiation and the operating temperature but when we have multiple uh, partial shaded condition it means that the whole of the panel a single module is receiving different type of radiation throughout the area then at in that case we have multiple peaks in uh, the vi characteristics ultimately which uh, arise to which give rise to maximum uh, multiple peaks of power also now these because of the multiple peaks of power 
the actual operating voltage of pv system is very difficult to uh, track our since we know that we since to operate the panel at a optimum voltage we always need to monitor the point of maximum power through uh, as per the operating conditions so uh, so uh, our conventional system conventional mppt system which depends on a uh, uh, conventional technique fails to track the global maximum power in this this type of situations and the problem becomes non linear so we have addressed this problem and we designed a panel system in which we varied the insulation to different panels in a group and we at first we obtained the characteristics to obtain or to analyze the characteristic and after that after the analysis these are the graphs of analysis which we plotted with the with the help of variable irradiance condition we simulated it in matlab and after that we designed a mppt system to track the maximum power with the help of conventional technique as well as with help of soft computing technique so uh, to uh, to to this this is the basic block diagram of overall system that we have simulated we 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 taken a pv panel of uh, 1000 kilo 1000 watt and we we uh, interfaced it with charge controller with uh, inverter and load and mppt is the ingredient of charge controller which is basically used to vary the duty cycle of charge controller as per the operating conditions so this is the internal block diagram of mppt uh, mppt system in which there is a current sensor voltage sensor is also there and based on the algorithm Ashish, 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 Ashish. Yes, sir. please go fast okay sir see sure, sir so based on these these analysis sir we have simulated different type of uh, mppt conventional and soft computing based method so basically uh, we targeted pno and inc based conventional method and we have also worked on uh, PSO improve PSO method. Now coming to the uh, coming to our simulating simulating model, we we taken we have taken two cases. But in one case we have uh, in one case I am coming to directly to the simulation. This is our simulating model. We have a, a, a PV system connected with the charge controller, and we have a particle swarm optimization based uh, controller attached to the system. and we have taken two test cases in one test case we have uh, we uh, ch change the irradiation to 50% of the system means for after four panels we have the different irradiations in two panels and two panels with the same irradiation in test case two all panels were have were having different radiations and different temperature also with these test cases we simulated our uh, 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 system with uh, 625 peak power rating and which was calculated with the numerical equation and we observed that the pso method was able to track the 625 watt of the power and in quant quant this was quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis was were also done to to see that whether the output is stable or not here uh, in the next paper i have also simulated two mppt so comparative graph is there because we are working on this particular topic so here we have seen that the pso based mppt were able to stabilize within one second to track the maximum power and the, uh, it it achieved the steady state with condition and the variation were not there after uh, achieving stability so stability consideration was also uh, considered for the analysis in test case 2 when different irradiation and different temperature were there it tracked the maximum power within the permissible limit but its stability time was increased and it took 0.8 second to gain stability these were the some comparison which we have done with the other paper papers of the contemporary research uh, to uh, check the uh, please please conclude yes so the summary of the observation was that we have implemented maximum power point tracking system and the improved particle swarm optimization the contribution in pso which we have done was to include the to uh, optimize the acceleration coefficients c1 c2 with uh, with quantum based computing uh, qpso we have also included in which we we uh, in include the uh, quantum bits qubits 
to the position vector. So the new equation of PSO, the velocity and position equations were updated, and we achieved a better con con convergence with the rapidly changing environmental conditions to obtract the maximum power. Mm. So uh, this this was a toolbox which we have designed for our particular system, and this this particular uh, uh, algorithm worked perfectly. the uh, changing environmental conditions. So this was thank you. Mm. 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 Any questions? Hello, Dr. Rono. First, you ask questions. Yeah. Sir, you are not audible. Please speak loudly. Myself? Yes, sir. Okay? No, sir. Your voice is not coming properly. Let me know. Is it okay? Yes, sir. It is fine now. Yes, sir. Sir, sir you are asking something? Uh, Dr. Anup? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let me ask then. So, how do you simulate static okay, Simulation. Please like. Yes, sir. How you simulate shading effect in your simulation work? So, yes, sir. So to simulate the shading effect, we apply a different type of irradiation among the percentage of cell in an array. The number of cells, 72 cell system, if we have taken, then 50% uh, cell having different irradiation, 50% cell having different irradiation, case one, and case two, when we have connected four modules together to form a system of one kilowatt, then out of those four modules, uh, along which the converter is connected, out of those four modules, two modules having different irradiation and two modules having different irradiations, or vice versa. Like that we have done, sir. And what is your voltage rating? Sir, so voltage rating of the system, we have, we have uh, taken Tata BP 250 watt uh, panel, so, uh, Tata BP 250 watt panel, we have uh, uh, forward that uh, data sheet. The voltage magnitude is what? 24 volt, uh, 24 volt was a uh, rating of a single panel. Hmm. And that 20 volt, 24 volt phase remain constant or variable? You are no, sir, it was, uh, when we, when we, uh, when, when we calculated the output, uh, the, uh, the voltage was variable. Then how you make it constant? The plot of voltage versus time and current versus time calculated. Sir, because voltage voltage of the panel varies with respect to the object. So, because uh, the temperature was changing, and uh, so the, there was corresponding change of operating voltage, VOC, uh, and VOC was changing with, uh, with respect to the operating conditions. Okay, from my side, it is over. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Ashish ji, one question from my side. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Since you have applied the partial shading effects, uh, what is the panel yes, efficiency you have taken? What is the panel efficiency you have taken? Sir, efficiency. Uh, panel Yes, sir. Conversion efficiency, sir. For analyzing the conversion efficiency, we have used PV -SYS, sir. In PV uh, we have, we plotted the electrical characteristic of the panel with respect to shading. How, how much conversion efficiency you have taken? 
for tata bp systems a 16.7% efficiency at a standard operating condition was there for polysilicon panel okay and uh, during a day when at which time you get a maximum sun uh sir uh, during day uh, uh sir that, that uh, depends on uh, that sir who correct that analysis of uh, day wise we have done not in this research but we have done that analysis with uh, uh, pv uh, system in during a day uh, we simulated uh, the we plan for uh, and we obtained the best production in the parts okay listen to me listen to me during a day of hourly blocks uh, you yes, sir, have sir. to take then you should know yes. at which time the maximum radiance will be there it is uh, geographical parameter according to the sun and all okay, okay fine okay fine thank you okay, thank you sir thank you sir if any other question is not there we may continue with the next presenter please yes sir <sighs> next time yeah please mm -hmm. uh, actually sharing your slide so paper id 34 nishan show yes, sir yes yes please share your i'm presenting okay Can you see the screen, sir? No, you have not shared. Screen is not visible of your. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. So now visible? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. It is It's a full screen. Okay, sir. Yes. Also. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nishant. I am from Bivyam Vidyanagar College. And I write this paper under the guidance of J C Barya sir. Okay, so here is my title: Performance Analysis of IPM SM Permanent. IPM SM means Permanent Magnet Synchronous Water by Vector Control Method. Okay. By the time in the last few decades, lot of research done on an energy efficient system. Okay. So IPM SM is now the most efficient water. Which compared to other water, here the content of my presentation introduction of IPM SM block diagram, MATLAB simulation result and references. So first of all, I introduce our uh, IPM SM. So permanent magnet synchronous machine is one kind of a synchronous machine in which field circuit is replaced with a permanent magnet. Due to elimination of a uh, field circuit, there is no rotor copper losses. As efficiency of IPM uh, SM is higher than induction and conventional synchronous machine. Commonly used material for permanent magnets are alnic of ferrite, cobalt, samarium, neodymium, iron, boron, barium. and strontium ferrite application of ipm sm is spindle drive air conditioning compressor cooling towers electric vehicles and robotics now here you see the rotor structure of a uh, pm motors uh, this is the on the rotor structure this motor classified into two ipm and spm if your permanent magnets are mounted on the surface of the rotor then your motor is called surface mounted permanent magnet as you see this brown is a permanent magnets mounted on the surface that's why it is called surface mounted permanent magnet motor if your permanent magnets are buried inside the rotor then it's called interior permanent magnet motor due to this ipm motor there is a create one difference between your d and q axis inductance that's why it's That, that's why when additional torque is produced in the ipm motor which called reluctance torque okay let me talk about later then okay the torque generation in ipm sm motor generated torque in an and ipm sm motor is total of a magnet torque and reluctance torque magnet torque magnet torque is uh, generated from a uh, attraction and repulsion force between rotating magnetic field of a stator and a magnet embedded in the rotor reluctance torque is generated due to saliency unique to ipm motor now here the total torque produced express the see here the equation total torque okay our ld lq is a inductance along with d and q axis vd vq are applied voltage at d and q axis it iq and is a direct axis and quadrature axis stator currents omega is a vector electrical angular velocity 
5M is a permanent magnet flux linkage and uh, it is back EMF and there is a stator winding resistance. Okay. The torque produced by an IPM SM can be split into two components at, as I explained earlier, the component arising from the permanent magnet flux is called a reactance torque or magnetic torque and expressed by T magnet. Okay. See here the equation of that. The other component arising from the rotor saliency can be called a reactance torque as expressed here. Here, the due to magnetic saliency of the motor, your LD is less than LQ. That's why this reluctance torque is opposite main torque of the system. So, th due to reluctance torque, the overall torque of the system is reduced. Okay, here is the block diagram of a proposed control scheme due to two types of torque produced in the IPM SM motors. That's why the controlling of this type of motor is quite difficult. So, here I propose one control scheme to control this motor. So, here is the IPM SM motor which fed the inverter. The gating signals of the inverter are controlled by space vector pulse width modulation. Here, I first of all, I three phase converted into two phase rotating reference stream means ABC converted into DQ0. This is called a pipe transformation and given to feedback to controller. Now, position and speed. The initial position of the rotor is need to know before starting the motor. Otherwise, your motor may not run or maybe in a loss of synchronism. Okay, so, in, so initial position of the rotor you need to know before start the motor. So here is a theta. The theta is a rotor angle which measuring and uh, the speed sensing is given to controller. Here's a speed reference or commanded speed you've given to controller and uh, here is a feedback speed. The, here the summing and error signal is generated and given to PI controller. This PI controller generates a commanding torque for uh, achieve this commanding speed. And again, in, in this controller, we only control the IQ, means your torque of the motor is directly proportional to direct axis current. So we only control IQ here. In ID, we give us zero constant. So we do not do anything with this ID, direct axis current. We only control the IQ of the system and given to current controller. And this current controller generates a reference voltage and given to DQ0 to ABC transformer. It's called it inverse arc transformation. And here to need to information about the rotor angle which uh, measuring and given to space factor pulse width motion that controller gate pulses of inverter. See, rotor angle. By using pulse transformation decoupled D and Q axis that give us supplementary benefit of separate control of D axis and Q axis current. This is the advantage of vector control method. You can separately control both D axis and Q axis current. The amount of torque produced in the motor directly proportional to magnitude of the Q axis current. Revolving field. Revolving magnetic field is generated without a consideration of permanent magnet position, means your rotor position in the rotor. Please cut your fast. In that case, attraction and repulsing force between the permanent magnets and revolving magnetic field may not be applied properly and may fail to rotate the motor. That status is called as loss of secretism. Okay, here the parameter of IPMSM which I use for simulation. Here my MATLAB simulation, which I explained in a block diagram, the same process happening here. Okay, and I got the result at a low speed with a motor run with a constant torque. Also, in a high speed, see at a high speed, your torque is reduced, it is good. With a less torque, you get maximum speed, means at speed. Here, are the results of a difference between actual speed and reference speed almost from 0 to 1500 RPM and 0 to 200 RPM at every instant motor speed almost reach the commanded speed. IPSM drive with proposed control scheme successfully fulfills all command. Here I use some references for this paper and uh, thank you. Any questions? Okay, Nishanti, you have, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. You have simulated your model using the MATLAB. Uh, yes, have sir. You, have you uh, written some M files also? M files, program files? No, sir. No, sir. No program files. Okay. And where from you have collected the data for the your IPM model? Reference paper is Okay. 
and what is the rating of the synchronous motor that you have taken okay i i show you sir uh, here is the rating of the motors okay how much it is it's visible to you sir there's table what yeah, the parameters it is visible but no voltage rating or some voltage okay, rating. the base speed of uh, my motor is 1500 rpm with 230 volt dc was the maximum phase capacity that, that is fine that is rpm but kuch voltage rating ya voltage rating to hogi iski ya kitne hp ki hogi ye to main rating to li nahi aapne Are you getting my point? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You have missed that thing. Okay, fine. Akshay sir, do you have any questions? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, sure. continue, please. And please let me know what is the initial position of rotor is required. What is that theta equal to? Sorry, sir. Can you repeat questions? Uh, initial position of rotor. So what is that position? Initial. So it it it's so uh, what we measuring. Uh, we initially we do not know uh, before the starting water, but uh, its ideal condition is a uh, behind the forty four degree which phase axis A. Your D axis is located behind the forty five or ninety degree. So it's a good condition. Look. And M and if it is not in that particular range, then what to do before starting any? Sir, motor in motor set itself the revolving magnetic field according to that the rot initial position of rotor may be in good positions. Okay. And your paper title is that the performance analysis of IPSM by vector control method. So performance yes, analysis. So your parameters are only this torque and speed. Yes, I am. I only hear performance analysis of velocity control, okay, and torque. So that you have to mention in your title, okay. Anyway. Okay, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, now from my side also it is completed. Okay. Can we have the next presentation, Nishant? Yes. You may. Uh, you have. Thank you, Nishant. Uh, next presentation is for uh, paper ID forty. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, please share your presentation. Uh, sir, is it visible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. I am Piyush Sharma. Uh, today, I have discussed about the comparative study of DC-DC converter with different control techniques. Uh, so, uh, in the introduction part, we as well as knows all DC to DC converters are the converter which make a voltage change in the form of DC by some switching actions. Uh, these DC-DC converters are used in uh, today's scenario in electrical vehicles, cellular phones, and uh, power enhancers power supplies pcs uh, office equipments leds and many more uh, so the examination of a control and control and adjustment of enhancing of uh, these dc dc converters have a should uh, should be estimated so many controlled strategies or control techniques are received from the in ddc in ddc uh, there are different types of techniques like a pwm voltage mode control current mode control pi control pid controls are the used but in the tradi traditional control strategy studies uh, they cannot under a huge variety under a boundary conditions so because of the huge reach variety of boundary so burden variety are appear uh, so next to move on a non linear controllers so next uh, uh, non linear controllers are used in ddc uh, converter like a hysteresis regulator slide mode control fuzzy logic control because they are used for a in ddc converter they makes a fast response 
as compared to traditional convert controllers. So hysteresis control methods uh, for a power converter have a quick reaction and uh, vigorous in nature with the basic plan. And the hysteresis can respond immediately after the huge burden transient happens. Thus, the benefits of the uh, hysteresis controller over the control method incorporate straightforwardness. So reaction circle, renumeration required and quick criticism to huge burden variety. Next, uh, then uh, another level of a uh, DCC converter te control technique is use. Uh, we are using normally PPID controllers, but in this ref paper in, uh, that, that is quoted by twelve and thirteen, the PPID controllers is in the fluffy nature. That is makes a uh, more effective response and a fast response also. Next, all DCC -DC converters go through a slide mode control techniques also and that slide mode control techniques becomes a very valuable valuable controller for the DCDC -DC converters. So these are the benefits of the slide mode controllers. So slide mode controller has a several advantage in all the manner controlling the DDC converter but it suffers only one problem when load and input voltage varied, then switching frequency is also varied. So due to this drawback, result of many control methods are developed to fix switching such as frequency PWM based SMC and adaptive SMC and fuzzy logic slide mode controller, etc. If there should arise an occurrence of the versatile control, the versatile hysteresis band is shifted into the boundary. So, uh, what is DC DC converter? The, on the base of the construction of operating principle, uh, this paragraph discussing the DC DC converter topologies. There are different types of topologies in DC DC converter. Normally, we discuss there are two types that is a non, a non isolated and isolated. And when the transformer is connected in this uh, in our converter, that is called uh, isolated, and another is called non isolated. What are the benefits between isolated and non isolated? It means uh, uh, in isolated systems, we protect our circuits, and in non isolated, we cannot protect our circuits. So, they are the different uh, types. In non isolated system, there are bug converters, boost, bug boost converters, static converters, and uh, SCVC converter. And the isolated converters like a flyback, forward, push pull, full bridge, half bridge converters. So, Last we discussed, there are different control techniques used in uh, DC DC converters, in which we are using ZVS converters, SAPI converters. Okay. Could you please conclude? Okay. Uh, so normally in this paper, I will discuss on uh, the comparative analysis in the parameters of design and implementation, operating point, reaction, and settling time. So in this chart, we can hear uh, that is. In the slide mode control, fuzzy logic control, hysteresis control, PID control, and PID controllers with fuzzy logic. So they are the uh, chart in which we have studied which one is better. So we see slide mode controller is one of the best controller which are used in DC DC converters as compared to fuzzy logic, hysteresis control, PID, and PID control. More of the researchers are slide are used slide mode controller with fuzzy logic control or so. so that is more effective result shows so in the conclusion is uh, we are highlighting the advantage and disadvantage of the each technique and they have uh, the many limitations and the drawback it depends on our need that which kind of control technique is needed for a particular application like a solar pv generation electrical vehicles cellular phone power optimizers power supplies for personal computer laptops Office, telecommunication, LED slide, etc. So these are the references here. Currently, I'm working on electrical vehicle. So I'm uh, designing one MATLAB model in this. That is a phase shift full bridge converter, and that makes a, a result uh, approximate 400 volt DC to uh, 12 uh, 12 volt DC with the minimum ripple voltage and minimum ripple current that have a modeling uh, design 
I have it. If you want to show, then I will show. Okay, Piyush, tell me one thing. Since you are working on EV, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Oh, which kind of DC motor is employed in EVs nowadays? In EVs? Yeah, electric vehicles. Uh, maximum. Uh, most of the workers are using a permanent magnet. Permanent magnet DC motor. Yes, sir. And what about brushless DC motor? Brushless DC are also used in. So, which is advantageous? Actually, I am working on totally a, a system for charging equipment, like a battery charging application, not for motoring, sir. Okay. So, what may be the rating of the battery charging? Means the battery which is employed in EVs. That is a twelve volt. Twelve volt battery, no. But not twelve volt. Twelve volt is just for the lighting purpose of the vehicle. Bigger battery is required in case okay, of okay, electric okay. vehicle. KV depend on that. That is three point three kilowatt uh, and. Uh, Approximately 3.3 kilowatt. I have a okay. Uh, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. That is my Simulink model, which I made it uh, for uh, DC to yeah, DC. You are your this paper only. You are talking about another paper, I think. Yes, he is showing some other slides. So okay. in your Akshay sir, please continue with your question. Yes, sir. In your this paper, so no single diagram is there or no simulation result is there. Only it's a study paper only. Yes, sir. It's a comparative paper, sir. Okay, just like review paper. Okay. Yes, so what is your input and output quantity of that DC DC converter? Mm, sorry, sir. Input mm. and output quantity is what for this DC DC converter. Uh, the yeah. input is four four hundred volt and output is twelve volt. Both DC for DC. So why DC DC converter is required? Why DC DC converter, sir? Hmm? Only for this voltage changing level you are using it. No, no, sir. For charging topology in EVs. There are two types of systems. And we are talking about this paper only, your study paper. Oh, sir! In this study paper, I am not making any uh, circuitry model. That is only comparative analysis. In comparative analysis, you have to take certain parameter common for all the methods. Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay. From my side, it is also completed. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Any else? Okay, then we may have the another paper. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Piyush. Yeah, thank you, Piyush. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Piyush. Uh, you may stop your presentation and uh, we'll start with the next presentation by Balwan Singh Kuldeep, uh, paper ID 42. Balwan Singh. Balwan Singh, we can see you, but uh, are you hearing us? Balwan Singh. Anup sir, uh, we are not hearing. Yeah, Balwan Singh, you are not audible. Maybe his mic is not working. Yeah, I suppose that. I think Balwan, your mic is uh, microphone is not working. Please check your microphone. If organizers have his mobile number, 
you may call in sure sure sir i'll do that in the meantime we can have the next presenter isn't it akshay sir can sure, you sure sure sir huh? call the next presenter id 44 puneet sharma we will listen balwant afterwards <laughs> Punit Sharma Yes sir I am here sir present sir Ha so please start your presentation Sir Balwant is still presenting sir that's why Yeah I'll ask him to sir the moderator can change the his presentation means he can stop presenting him who is yes, the sir. host of host of this uh, meet yeah puneet now you can share puneet जस्ट सेकंड सर सर आर माय स्लाइड्स विजिबल सर या ओ good morning all um, my name is punish sharma i'll be presenting an analysis paper on uh, design stimulation and performance analysis of optimal placement of uh, distributed generator in radial distribution uh, distribution system uh, my contents are introduction to dg advantages of dg optimization of dg using ga that is a genetic algorithm proposed okay. methodology uh, your slides are not changing uh, concerns are not so clean just a second sir also make it full screen mm-hmm. now is it okay sir not full screen is there and post title slide is there only just to be at this screen Puneet, while sharing, you have to click on the full screen icon. Full screen icon. Okay, sir. Just let me. Know. Yeah, I think you stop your presentation and please start your presentation. Is it okay, sir? Now. It is okay, but your slides are not changing. Go to the slideshow. Just a second. Sir, 
sir now right of slide is there only not second slide move the slides move the slides ah now it is okay जनरेटर्स uh these are also called uh, distributed resources decentralized generations uh production decentralized uh, distributed generators uh, generation can be defined as the uh, generation having a capacity to 100 megawatts and placed at distribution sites and they are neither uh, centrally planned nor dispersed actually uh, in present scenario there is a very much demand of the energy day by day it's increasing and we have to make uh, many more projects that it be hydro and uh, solar or wind maximum energy to meet uh, the power uh, at the customer and we have to make more and more power projects uh, uh, and uh, at present situation there are many much uh, losses due to the transmission and uh, proper uh, voltage uh, planning is not been uh, met due to this conditions due to this conditions uh, we have to make uh, distributed generators to be employed to is a loss mm, it reduces a loss uh, uh, if we go for uh, present scenario uh, uh, the recently effect of disaster of uh, tapovan uh, there was a hydro power plant which actually washed it away and uh, uh, this was just due to the met the met met of uh, that uh, customer uh, um, uh, supply demand and once we can actually if we put a dg in a particular position in a grid system which are topologically uh, uh, radial in system in transmission system we enhance our system and most of the demand can be meet in itself uh, in the present system also what are the advantages of dg they are actually basically uh, if we go in detail there will be uh, criteria or uh, uh, different part one is a uh, technical actually they make uh, uh, efficient in the system efficiently and power loss reduction has been done when we use dgs uh, improve load factors that for sure and increases the power quality that is the main part which are actually dealing in when we actually install dgs economical reduction in transmission and distribution costs cost actually this is the main part when we comes to the uh, planning of the uh, transmission lines transmission distribution cost is the main part uh, reducing electrical tariffs uh, once the tnd actually cost reduces the uh, electric electricity tariff also in uh, reduces because the cable size and all this depend upon the uh, transmission of the power environmental is the main constraint here also we can't actually uh, leave behind environmental concerns where a reduction in the emission gases because when we uh, use the dgs in the particular system the reduction of emission you can directly switch over to your objectives and the work we have you have done and results and discussion okay sir um, um moving on to the next slide after this this is the particularly system where how it is been uh, customer been fed from the generation system and distributed generation uh, to the next slides are the uh, distributed generator types and technologies which has been used the different turbines and devices storage and renewable devices also to the next slides if uh, slide if i move it is a optimization of dg using ga that is genetic uh, um, allo, um, algorithm the benefit of dg on a uh, site specific and various optimization technique are implemented to optimize site and size of dg for enhanced uh, benefit actually we can't put the uh, dgs of a different size and uh, uh, at uh, different positions we have to put it actually by making uh, a complete algorithm and uh, this for this we make actually a pso that is particle swarm optimization technique is applied in this work for optimal placement of dg and the size of it also to reduce the maximum uh, power losses uh, the the genetic algorithm is actually a directed search algorithm based on the mechanism of a biological evolution which is was uh, developed by john holland university of michigan uh, it actually this is the same thing which is related to the evolution of the human beings of the natural uh, phenomena where uh, the adaptive process of a natural system is been conceived uh the to design artificial system software that retain the robustness of the natural system this was the main uh, part of it the genetic algorithm uh, provide efficient 
effective uh, techniques of for optimization and machine learning application widely used uh, in business or scientific and uh, energy circle this is the basically such technique um, hierarchy of it and i have used uh, for particular analysis uh, such technique has been genetic algorithm which is parallel sequential centralized distribute uh, steady state and generation component of ga uh, could be a uh, when you are solving a problem that could be a simple encoding technique that is consist of the genes and chromosomes uh, particularly a uh, bit uh, uh, information of 1010 could be a genes and uh, collective information comes to the chromosomes initial process in, uh, initialization process that is the creation is done by the uh, genes and chromosomes for the evaluation function is been done which is uh, uh, in terms of related to the environment selection of parents there are actually two different parents which are def, uh, randomly been chosen to uh, um, to uh, to produce the children's that is actually the offspring for the mutation and the best part is been retained a uh, genetic uh, operators that is mutation and recombination against the uh, mutation and combination is the best part and the best uh, uh, of the uh, value which is stabilized to the optimization position is been retained and thereafter all are rest is been uh, declined from that uh, position parameter setting is a practice and art it, that means uh, it's been continuously uh, it means continuously been done just to uh, get the optimized position simple genetic algorithm when we come to it is just analyze population that means uh, in, initially the um, the input are uh, been initialized so that a population is been done thereafter the population is mutual uh, mutation and uh, combination is done so further evaluate the population while termination criteria is not satisfied that means the optimal value till the time it is not reached it is keep on going on and iteration has been um, continuously Uh, uh continuously been done select parents for reproduction perform combi- recombination and mutation evaluate population this is the thing actually is completely going on just to get the optimize uh, that result which is near at about to the maximum efficiency we want the cycle of ga of reproduction is same the population which is here is the uh, initial position where is randomly parents have been uh, chosen thereafter production reproduction uh, is been done for the children has been produced for modification thereafter this modification modified children been evaluated if they been actually near about the uh, desired value or de- de- desired uh, that uh, efficiency if uh, are been the same this goes to the population again if that uh, is not there's been uh, deleted members and they are discarded back again if they are in the uh, primary uh, that uh, a uh, premises under this premises it will go for the reproduction again population uh, that population could be chromosomes could be bit string real numbers a uh, permutation of the elements with uh, a list of rules uh, r1 to r23 and program element uh, uh, genetic programming and data structure we uh, have actually used here i triple e a bus 33 system for uh, this uh, uh, analysis reproduction uh, is uh, from pa- uh, pa- pollution uh, population sorry uh, the parents uh, reproduce the children and parents are selected at random which are already mentioned with selection chances biased in uh, relation to the chromosomes evaluation chromosomes modification children modified are been uh, carried out further and modification are uh, static statically triggered operator type uh, types are mutation and crossover recombination the best of uh, things has been moved up and the rest has been discarded this is the mutation local modification before and after so if ga is not expected from you that you explain the full ga geo everybody knows what is ga you directly conclude what you have done in your paper and research okay sir the proposed methodology uh, methodology is uh, this from starting the defined cost uh, to generation initial population if the optimal solution is been received then it's fine otherwise it go to the third position again and it will done till the optimization is been done this is the third test system one where 33 bus system radial distribution system has been achieved and uh, uh, different uh, switching has been done for in particular is this system this is the initial switching sir in my particular case there are uh, five loops loop 1 loop 2 loop 3 loop 4 and loop 5 where are uh, 33 buses and switching uh, till 37 this is as 37 been done and different condition has been achieved where dg has been set up just to get the optimal value 
result when i come to this conclusion this is the optimal placement sizing of dg and system because uh, we can't put uh, different size of dg and uh, a placement of dg should be measured very well a uh, configuration for the i333 bus distribution system this is the dg uh, type where no dg has been set up the calculation the first dg and the second different sizes first dg is 2.61 megawatt and location is 6 at uh, 6 number of uh, switches for uh, different value the losses value were for no dg was uh, 211 kilowatt and uh, reduction was nil because no dg was there and first was uh, uh, 114.3 kilowatt the reduction was 45.838 percent less and uh, in the second was 1.3 mvr at location 30 3030 uh, switches value was 150.3 kilowatt and reduction was 28.782 which is uh, stands that the first one uh, the first uh, dg type was much more efficient in reduction of the losses if we go for the size losses uh, size of different types of dgs at various location for uh, uh, ieee bus distribution system this is the uh, chart for it type 1 dg and uh, mv and uh, type 2 dg for the type 1 dg it's been the brown one and the type 2 is the blue one and it shows that uh, when a different location uh, um, the losses uh, the and the more of the uh, the more of the dg one has been pluto the less of the losses are here and that second part is total real power losses different buses for ieee 33 bus distribution system it shows the type 1 is uh, uh, more less of the losses whereas con considered to be the type 2 is more in the losses when the same condition different bus system has been applied switching for these are the uh, different uh, particle uh, swarm optimization system above one is the pro proposed one and the last one is the taboo search there are different loading conditions the base light conditions and medium conditions heavy conditions uh, these are the switches for which uh, this proposed system has been applied uh, switches of 13 70 20 35 and 37 is the max uh, is the uh, for the base is the maximum one value is 80 uh, 89.0955 and decline in the percentage of loss is 57.77 whereas the at the light uh, load conditions uh, these switches when uh, put on 14 20 35 36 and 37 the values were 79.9614 uh, kilowatt and the decline was uh, 62.1 percent as most of the uh, uh, at most of the uh, proposed uh, loading condition this is the actual and ideal to be the realistic and uh, um, um, more in reduction of the decline in the losses whereas uh, a different uh, condition the pso and uh, taboo search has been done and uh, less of the reduction in been achieved uh, that was for the uh, type 1 dg penetration and this is for the type 2 dg pen, uh, penetration again the proposed is the base light medium heavyweight conditions of the load and uh, switches are uh, for the 33 bus system are the switches 13 15 20 25 and 35 this has been chosen at the ideal conditions where the value of the load 131.45 kilowatt has been observed and uh, decline was in the losses were 33.7 percentage at the light conditions, uh, 13, 17, 20, 22, 35 switches uh, were uh, connected and the loss was 117.57 uh, kilowatt. Decline in the losses was 44.27 percent. <coughs> Conclusion to my uh, analysis is uh, through this presentation presents the optimal allocation of uh, different types of DGs using improved GA techniques for active and reactive power compensation to minimize the real power losses in the primary distribution network. PSO that is the particle swarm optimization approach for uh, optimal uh, placement of multiple types of DG not only reduces the line losses but also minimize the sizes of uh, DGs. These are my references, a uh, quite long one. Uh, thank you. Okay, Puneet, you have done good work. Uh, but you can you tell me you as you have applied your model to the radial distribution system, isn't it? Yes, sir. So how do we maintain the radiality of the distribution system if it is disturbed or some topology is disturbed during the fault conditions? How can we maintain the radiality of the system? 
sir actually uh, my concern of uh, study is in, at the initial stage and uh, what i have received is a dg could be put when the topology of a radial is concerned there is a only one um, i mean uh, place of generation of the uh, power it is been distributed to the end whenever, port whenever whenever you um, optimally place some generators within the distribution system since it is a microgrid kind of model and it is also a grid connected model the topology will be disturbed obviously So yes, radiality yes. will also be disturbed. So how do we maintain, or how can we maintain the radiality of that particular system? Because after the, after all the uh, radiality should be maintained. Otherwise, system will go in imbalance, isn't it? Yes, sir. So there is there is methods like you have got some switches. so by operating those switches in a particular sequential manner or in some combinatorial manner you can maintain the radiality of system and this should be the constraint to your problem also okay sir okay. i know sir thank you sir and as far as ga and pso is concerned Uh, what have you found that PSA is better or GA is better as far as the convergence criteria is concerned or optimality is concerned? Sir, actually, um, uh, sorry. Which is better? Sir, um, PSA is better, sir. Why so? Sir, actually, PSA it's a uh, it's a very actually uh, not a random one. It uh, goes to the idealistic. Um, I would say. Uh, the desired part, the desired to the desired result in a short span of time. Whereas uh, uh, in PSO, sir, actually one thing is very clear: you have a very much of input, and uh, you have to put that input uh, in uh, sequence wise. Whereas in the GA, sir, uh, uh, that uh, itself uh, randomly chooses and uh, and uh, give you the result for that particular condition, sir. But uh, PS this one major um, factor is that you have got two construction factors C one and C two in PSO, so that will control the flight of the swarms, isn't it? Okay, sir. And hence it is maintained the optimality, and this is the beauty of the PSO. Okay, sir. Thank Controlling you. Controlling parameters are more in PSO. Okay, sir. Thank as you. As far as as per, compared to GA. Okay, sir. okay. Akshay sir, you may continue. Okay, okay. Now, what is the full form of DG? Is it a distributed generator or distributed generation? Sir, di uh, distributed sir generator sir. Generator. What is the difference between simple generator and distributed generator? Sir, simple generator are actually uh, one sided sir. Either a distributed generator can be put between two uh, different grids and uh, comes as a switches sir. It on the distributed side sir. Once it from the generation to the customer, and this one is from the uh, within the distribution system, sir. At the same time, both side generator can su supply. Yes, sir. And in your system, so how many DGs are there for your system radial? Sir, actually, I have put uh, four, sir, in loop. So that you have chosen yourself, or in I Triple E they have mentioned. Sir, actually, I mean, uh, uh, in guidance of uh, my sir, sir, Mr. Pawan Diwari, sir, uh, under that I Triple E sir paper, there were four, sir. For sir, that particularly mentioned that uh, we will put that four here. And what is your overall conclusion? What is your optimal placement in your work? Sir, the situation uh, situation was sir uh, that uh, five position for the light and base, sir. a uh, load different positions were concluded and this was the um, i mean uh, five position i have got by switching uh, which is the most op optimal to put the dg there so that the voltage parameters are maintained efficiency is maintained and losses are very reduced to the optimal side sir so that your answer in terms of distance in kilometer meter point of view that low location sir location in terms of sir kilometer sir what is your total length Sir, that actually I have done. I am right now. No, I have done that data, sir. Okay, that's all my side. So you can stop your presentation. Next candidate will join. Okay, sir. Just a second, sir. Thank you, Puneet. Uh, Just a second, sir. Can we have? 
Sir, uh, uh, with your permission, can we have Balwant? He's ready now. Yes, yes. Okay, Balwant, you can start your presentation. Sir, it is visible. Yes. Yes. Good evening to all of you. I'm Balwan Singh Kudhi. I'm tech scholar of, from Sri Balaji College of Engineering and Technology. Today's my topic is mathematical modeling, design, and simulation of fuzzy logic based UPC for power quality improvement. In the power quality, there is a problem with no linear loads, load, loads, harmonic currents, generator resonance mechanism, consider overload performance reduction. The demand of reactive power is well known to cause the feeder voltage to fall increased losses. With the expanded utilization, non-linear power gadgets stacks in business has promoted harmonic edges. The stands extraordinary worries for both the utilization and clients. The voltage hence expands in the voluntary voltage and poor power quality to stock slide likewise add to quantities of power quality issues that the client faces. First of all, I want to tell about the power quality. Power quality is a parameter which describes the process of electrical power delivery. He, he qual quantity of electrical power supply is set to the user under normal operating conditions. Determine the supply voltages. The power quality issues are mainly depend. Yes, sir. Hello, your slide is not changing. Slide is not changing. Now, sir. Only title slide is seen there. Okay, sir. Wait, sir. Now, sir. Slides are not visible, Balwan. Now, sir. It is changing? Yeah, yeah. It's changing. Yeah. Now it yeah. is okay. okay. Power quality issues are mainly voltage sag, voltage swell, transition, clinkers, no change, voltage unbalance, voltage interpretation, poor quality factors. First of all, next we know about the UPKC. UPKC is a unified power quality conditioner. UPKC is the most complete configuration of hybrid filters is known as the UPKC, which is also known as the universal active filters. UPKC has sun and series compensation capable for harmonics, reactive power, voltages, disturb disturbance and power flow controls. UPKC can compensate both voltage related problems such as voltage harmonics, voltage sex, swills, voltage filters, and current related problems like reactive power compensation, correlation, current harmonics, and load and balance. It is the diagram of the UPQC here. Two, two filters are used. Series filters are used. So it is also not active filters. Here the and it, when it, and the other side electrical power grids is it, here we used a proposed methodology to compensate the harmonics in the power system. The active the sun active power filter is utilized to make up current related issues. For example, the active power prey current constant separation and burden unbalanced by arrangement active power filters is utilized to make up voltage related issues. The unified power quality controller is intended to incorporate shunt and sequential active power filters through a typi typical DC connect capacitor. UPDC structure is like a unified power stream controller. Then again, UPDC controller is multi 
maturation because of harmonics and voltage irregulation not with the standing controlling the power systems of key re recurrence it compares of two consequent voltage sources inverter vsi sharing a typical dc interference be between the two the upkc fuzzy logic controller or wheels is showing here in the fuzzy logic controller basic control action is determined by a set of linguistic rules these rules are determined by system variables since the numerical variables are converted into linguistic va variable mathematic modeling of the system is not required fuzzy logic controller fuzzy logic uses linguistic variable instead of numerical variables the fuzzy logic is a form of many valued logic in which the values of variables may be real number between 0 to 1 both inclusive fuzzy logic is based on the observation that people makes decision based on impression and non numerical interference the variable of linguistic variable fuzzy sets is called fuzzification an arbitrary membership fuzzy function is assigned to each linguistic labels the rule are combined by the using implementation and composition interference here is showing fuzzy logic controller here pre pre processing then now fuzzification now rule based then interference engine defuzzification now post processing upkc or view there are three parts in fuzzy logic controllers first of all fuzzification second one is interference engine and third one is defuzzification the fuzzy logic control controller is characterized as seven fuzzy sets for each input and output triangular membership functions for simplicity fuzzification used continued universe of d courses implication using madmis minimum operation then next is d fuzzification here we use a simulation so as utilize the proposed fuzzy logic control test upkc exclusion has been reproduced 400 volt use matlab swing 50 hertz three stage ac power supply the three stage diode rectifier that feeds the rl loads is viewed as a non direct burden the greatest burden power representation is viewed as 13 kilowatt plus j10 kvr kilo volt source observation is 0.1 source inductance is 0.1 micro hertz sorry micro henry so as the test of active of the upkc is ligand and addition 20% of the first list has been made the upkc has been reconnected utilizing the proposed fuzzy logic here Showing first first diagram is showing simulation mode with fault without UPGC. Second one simulation simulating model of grid UPGC using fuzzy logic control. And third one is showing simulating model fuzzy logic controller and the in its application. Now it's a a form without fuzzy logic without a fuzzy logic which is not based on the upkc here some harmonics are produced and now it is with upkc upkc with fuzzy logic control controller is used so harmonics are reduced here so i conclude the result the total harmonic distortion of the source current before interference in the upkc is 24.50 percentage constant range of the source current sub subsequent to associates the upkc is appeared in the figure the total harmonic distortion of the source current in the wave of associated with the upkc is within limits the dc interference capacitor voltage is held steadily and its reference is in intensive by the fuzzy logic controller the reproduction after the effect of many causes 
are appearing shows the stop voltage with 20% voltage hanging in every one of stages from 0.25 to 0.45 seconds. Okay, now I have concluded. Non-direct losses are regularly influenced by the power quality issues, constant flows, max frameworks, re vibration, capacitor overburden, decline in proficiency. The voltage drops are ordinarily happen power quality issues in electric frameworks. The UPQC is one of the facts controller utilized for moderating the impact of voltage distress. The arrangement comp compressor in the UPQC is a quiet short of voltages influences so that it consists express the arrangement compensators never expands dynamic power. The expansion of fuzzy, load, fuzzy relations controller with the traditional UPQC diminishing the voltage hence level in the yield voltage and furthermore improvement improves the power factors. The control circuit is planned utilized utilizing fuzzy logic relation controller and reproduction ut utilizing MATLAB symbols. Thank you. And any query, sir? Balwanji? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Okay, you, since you have applied fuzzy logic controller, any other controller yes. like PID controller or any other adaptive controller, MRAC or some kind of this can be applied to your problem? Yes, yeah, sir. Can apply. So which which, will, which controller will be the advantageous that can enhance the performance of the system? Sir, fuzzy logic controller is a more suitable. How can you say that? Because because it can control machines and con consumer products, and it may not give accurate re reasons, but acceptable reasons. Fuzzy logics helps to deal with the uncertainty in. Basically, fuzzy is there to remove the vagueness in the system, sir. isn't it? Sir, repeat, sir. Fuzzy logic is used to remove the vagueness in the system. To, re to not sir, it is used in UPQC to reduce the harmonic systems. And out of all the fat controllers, which one gives the best performance as far as TSD control and all is concerned? UPQC, UPFC, Stackcom, D Stackcom. Yes, sir. Kiski performance up sir, UPQC ki achi sir. Okay, fine from my side. Okay, sir. Okay. So you have control that voltage T H D or current T H D? Current. In your conclusion, you have mentioned all about voltage. And you have not shown that THD diagram. So, total THD is something you have mentioned that 24% approximately. To which yes, sir. exact number of order of that THD is higher? Yes, sir. Repeat, sir. Number of order of harmonics, I am asking you. Sir, it's third order harmonics reduced and Only higher. Third. And higher. That diagram we have not shown. Yes, sir. Not showing in this slide. And with the help of that waveform, we have shown that. So that is voltage related waveform or current related. In that, how can you say that it's a THD? So where is your THD? Please explain it. It is, sir, voltage related waveforms. Ah, you are sometimes talking about current. You are so result for Sorry, voltage yes. and from that have you know now you just go previous slide that waveform from here yes, have sir. You it, sir it is voltage waveforms so THV related your comment related with the diagram that diagram is where it's a it's a with the THD and then without THD 
and you are doing in the load side or supply side load side sir load side yes sir and suppose you have an induction motor one you connected in star connection that winding and give the supply and other time make it in delta so from this two so in which case the harmonic is higher or no both are in both the cases remain same sorry sir I... okay from my side also completed so you can stop the presentation and last candidate please okay thanks thank you balwant ji uh the last presentation for this session paper id 45 anand sharma i am audible sir yes and my ppt is also visible sir yes but your audio is you have to raise okay sir now audio is clear sir Yes, yes, yes. Good, sir. Myself, Anand Sharma, sir. Uh, I am a PhD scholar in Sangam University. Uh, today, I am here to present my presentation on performance analysis of full bridge DC to DC converter for electrical vehicle electrical vehicle application. So basically, that is a flow presentation, objective. Uh, then after introduction, block diagram, proposed model, uh, simulation results, and then last is conclusion and references. So uh, main objective is. Uh, to take uh, uh, charging of electrical vehicle for full bridge is right now it is very uh, uh, carbon carbon emission in atmosphere it is increasing day by day so government is also initiated to shift from conventional vehicle to the electrical vehicle so for that electrical vehicle charging is the main issue Uh, the charging time and charging infrastructure is the main issue for electrical vehicle so basically that uh, paper is based on to performance analysis of full bridge converter basically i am working on bidirectional converter topology for both the direction it will charge low to high or high to low so uh, that uh, model is prepared in matlab simulink or voltage rip, uh, vol try to minimize the voltage ripple using to the phase shift control technique are taken out for control uh, control purpose of that topology so here is the introduction already i am taking air pollution is the main problem for society or the carbon emission is very increasing day by day in the environment so for that problem various automobile industry and researchers are right now giving attention on then and government also paid more attention towards the electrical vehicle expansion so try to just reduce the uh, emission uh, carbon emission uh, just generated by the conventional vehicle so for that our society will benefited so here uh, two types of dc to dc converters are there for charging purpose of electrical machine isolated and non isolated so isolated is more advantages it is provided isolation between control circuit and power circuitry uh, and then after that is also reduce the magnetic spikes with respect to circuitry so here full bridge half bridge full bridge and push full forward uh, various types of topologies are there uh, but uh, that main objective is the bidirectional purpose vehicle to grid or grid to vehicle so here i am just only take uh, take care of the full bridge converter for charging cycle and try to minimize the voltage ripple for the same so ultimately that uh, is step up the voltage from 48 volt to around 120 volt is achieved here so that is a basic model of full bridge converter four switches are there and that is a current controlled basically and high frequency transformer is there or secondary side is completely a diode based rectifier or try to achieve control topology using to the phase shift control so here uh, from switch m1 and m2 180 degree phase shift is provided with some a delay between both the switches because the the switch switches will be not short circuited to each other uh, with the conduction at at same time so here m1 and uh, m you can see here m1 and m4 switches are uh, turned on together and then provide a 
square pulse at the primary end of the transformer and that then after high frequency a transformer is there just to compact the converter sides with respect to increase the charging uh, current so then after m2 uh, then after M3 and M2, both the switches will turn on together and then provide the negative half cycle of the AC and then uh, diodes are there. So uh, DA, DA and DD, uh, DD diodes are conducted unidirectionally and then it just gives us a DC output voltage. So that is a basic uh, working of that using to the phase shift control of that method or that is the simulation parameter. So for for the high, high frequency application, MOSFET is the better situated to just adopt the, as a semiconductor power MOSFET is a, just adopt the switch as a conduction. Then value of the inductor is around 100 micro entry. Uh, capacitor is take for the ripple minimization is at 200 microfarad. Switching frequency is takes out around 4, 4. 40 kilohertz input voltage I am providing here is 48 volt and output voltage achieves around is a 116 volt nearest to that so that waveforms is showing here uh, 48 volt is the uh, applied DC voltage or with respect to that the output voltage comes across the capacitor it will it will around a 160 volt for the same the current uh, conduction waveform is there and the switching waveform for uh, with respect to primary and secondary current waveforms is showing their square pulses. So that is the basic simple model is uh, just to prepare for the analysis of the paper. You just uh, what is the assumptions will come for the when we are charging the battery and how uh, uh, how we will minimize the voltage ripple at the uh, secondary side of the high frequency transformer with respect to that. So minimization of the ripples so minimization minimization of the ripple and current due to uh, at the process of charging it will achieve using to that uh, yes sir so matlab tool is used for converter topology to minimize the ripple and for the effective charging of the battery that is the reference is take, uh, taken out for the simulation uh, that is the brief uh, intro, uh, brief PPT from my side. Sir. Ananji. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in your case, in your DC to DC converter. Yes, sir. Sir, your voice is not coming clearly. Now we are not audible. What is, what is the ripple factor in your case? Yes, sir. Ripple factor kitna aya tha aapka? Ripple factor around sir, 3%, sir. 3%? So three percent is more or less? It is less, sir. Okay. And have you worked out something on TSD and current or voltage TSD? No, sir. Actually, I, actually, sir, I am not working on the power.